in its face. Welcome, everybody, to an new episode of Figure It Out. This is going to be a great episode. I know I personally have a shit ton of figures I can't wait to show off. Uh, and Pete's got some goodies. Joel's got a brand new TV. He's not going to show us, but he has one, and that song, bitch, is nice. Um, so, all right, let's get I can always, I can always do this. Okay, cool. So, you won't <laughs> maneuver it so we can see. Um, all right. So let me introduce my panel, starting off with Pete. What's up, Pete? What's up, everybody? Damn, I love that cup. I love that cup so much. Uh, and Joel, what's up, Joel? What's up, boys? All right. Guess we're not men, Pete. Uh, That's right. <laughs> well, not to me, man. You know what's funny is it, it kind of reminds me of a, a, a place I used to get like car stuff back in the day when uh, when I had my Mustang. And I had dreams of like English town and having a race car and shit. Oh, um, a place called Big Boys Toys. And that's really all we're, you know, we're just big boys still playing with toys. So I'm not offended by that. I'm that's cool. It. I'll take it. <laughs> big boys in their toys. Maybe that's what the yep. box should have been called. <laughs> I think people would have thought we were poor. So yeah, uh, figure it out works better. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm just picturing telling someone like, hey, what's your show's name? Big boys with toys, and it's like, <laughs> Juwan, I'm not interested in your OnlyFans. And it's like, no, I swear, it's it's not that. Like, it, it's not the, me. Like, like my explanation, Pete, would have only made it weirder. It's just me and a whole bunch of guys getting together, <laughs> talking about our toys. Our toys. <laughs> no, no, that's but, not any better. You know, imagine the Google traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing the people with their pants unzipped. They type it in and they see us and they're like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> and then they're like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what we'll keep, we'll keep them is that one episode you did in the road. <laughs> That's how I was looking for. Here we go. <laughs> all right, let's get into figure talk. Uh, Pete, you want to go first? You go first, buddy. Okay. I, I, want, I want to see what, uh, what you got. <laughs> all right, so I fully completed my black panther set so i'm going to show some of the old ones and then intro the the new ones so first off starting with ulysses claw looks just like him face sculpt is gorgeous amazing good that's that new i was reading about that actually like the hasbro's got this new technology that they like almost like clone the face for the figure so got the man that everyone wants to bring back that's a great figure Mm. Look how nice that shit looks. All the golden jaguar. And then, of oh, course, man. you had to get the actual Michael B. Jordan face. Oh, yeah. Killmonger Just and like his glorious things. Just like him. Mm. And his Vegeta getup. Imagine. <laughs> and Io from the Dora Milaje. Io got her own figure. Very cool. Uh, to be fair, that figure comes with multiple heads. So technically, she's, oh, she's all of the Dora. She's our, She's no. all of the Dora Milaje. Yeah. How many uh, heads? Like just in case you wanted to like army build. Right. Uh, <laughs> this is an old, uh, not an old, but this is the Black Panther that I showed you guys before. But let me see if you guys can notice the difference in this Black Panther. Probably can't. What do you mean? Uh, oh, wait, wait. What was the question? The difference in this Black Panther. I can just tell compared, you guys. Compared Versus to the one you just held up? No. Okay. So. That's, that's what I mean. Why, what okay, am I comparing so, it to? Okay. So the first one I showed you had a horrible T'Challa skull. Like the face for T'Challa was just. I didn't, fucking I didn't pay horrible. attention. Now you see that's Chadwick. That's 100% Chadwick Boseman right there. Okay. Undoubtedly. Well, what was the other one? The other face sculpt, if I have it here. For comparison's sake. Yeah, no, I understand because it's fucking horrible. No, that's the new one. <laughs> like, because it's bad. Here we go. Bad as it gets. Here we go. That was T'Challa. Oh, no, 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 no. That's Reggie Jean Putnam. <laughs> <laughs> that is God yeah. awful. As you that's somebody, see. but that ain't Chad. That ain't <laughs> Chad. That ain't, that ain't oh, Chad. Yeah. All right. So now we're getting into uh-huh. our new, uh, the ones I just got. They're not. For the listeners out there, these figures aren't new. It's just new to me because I just got them. That's all I'm saying. Uh, What I think is the worst suit of the MCU Black Panther, and that is his Civil War suit. He was a basic bitch in this one. I mean, he was just all in black when he first premiered. So, you know, it 
The build up was there. I like that yeah, suit. Just the basic. I call it the basic bitch. That's what he had. Um, and then also had to get Shuri. That's really a good sculpt. Wow. Does he have a, does he have a gauntlet? So yeah. uh, actually, she does, Joel. I'm glad you asked. I didn't take out everyone's specific weapons because I. But you will eventually. <laughs> if um no, I just wasn't sure if it was something uh, you guys are gonna bring up. So I was like, ah, I won't. And then I was like, shit, I should have just known Joelle would be the one. Like, does she have something to fight with? She <laughs> when she's there, like, crossing her arms, like, waiting for her shit. Because <laughs> they don't sell laptops. <laughs> so I couldn't get her. She didn't fight with a laptop. <laughs> couldn't get her something to type on. But yes, Joelle, she does. Ah, uh, cool. Panther and blasters, whatever they call That's really cool. I bet you you could type in like mini laptop on Etsy. You find somebody. I'm making, going like, to. Some action I'm going stuff. to, Pete, just so I could do that. Um, okay, so part of this set, there was Whoa. a build a figure for both of these sets. The first <laughs> set, this was the first build a figure. I know you guys will immediately recognize them. Ah, uh, my, oh, my yeah. guy. M'Baku was the first build a figure. And for some strange reason, this wasn't just a regular figure. It was a build a figure. I'm sure you guys can recognize who that oh, is. Oh, yeah. Is that an okay? Oh. That's uh, Okoye. Yeah. Okoye. Okay. So she's not. All right. So, yeah, she definitely had a, a different clothes on. All right. So. All right. And here's. I just thing. assumed. That was you, like... can tell, you can tell she's a build a figure. Because they didn't focus on her uh, her face sculpt. Because if you look at Io again, look how much it looks just like Io. Right. It yeah, does. it does. Yeah. yeah, they did not care about Okoye whatsoever. So <laughs> there was probably some kind of money deal that she didn't sign on dotted line. They were like, I don't care how she fucking looks. Just so. get close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just get ballpark and we'll be fine. Um, also had to get Nakia. Nakia. Nice. That that looks just like, see, now that looks just like her, too. Just Rings. like her. Yes, she does, Joel, right here. I might as well just take out everyone's goddamn weapons. Right. Well, you came in, you know, half assed. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Hold on. And, you know, again, there's probably people making custom sculpts of the other head, too. I should look into that so I don't have to keep looking at that shit. Wow. Those are, huge. Those are yeah, really big. Yeah, shit. I tried to put it in my ear the other day. It's like, is this an earring? No, okay. Um, I was going to go somewhere else with it, but yeah, no, earrings are good. Earrings are good. <laughs> Please stay with earrings, Pete. I'm going to um, stay with earrings. <laughs> obviously, uh, the suit that we see uh, when he first comes back to uh, Wakanda. Well, not comes back, but you know what I'm talking mm. about. I like the hints of purple on that. Yeah. yeah. That's his Black Panther suit. And yeah. here is the, because uh, it does have a uh, different heads. This is the T'Challa face sculpt that comes with it. That's pretty good. He's supposed to be smirking, but then I screen... Okay, I thought it was kind of like kind of... Yeah, my, my screen's not showing that as well as I would like it to. No, I had to go cool. to the OG himself, King T'Chaka. That's cool. Which I do hate. Oh, they don't yeah. have removable head. So he's just meant to just be in, in the suit, and that's it. I love that they give him the gold accents because I'm I remember that from like the uh, Midnight uh, Sun no, no Marvel Knights they the gold black. I'm about to say shit. He was at Midnight Suns. Yeah, no, me high for a Marvel second. Knights. I had to get Black Bolt. Awesome. Black Bolt. Weird. Add addition to that set, but okay. <laughs> yeah, very weird. Um, and he was in the Black like... Panther set. Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. I was saying <laughs> well, the one that does make sense. Namor. Namor. Yo, they That's a queer. Cool. Yeah, I like that. It's different. <laughs> uh, so wait, his, oh, he's got green green pants. All right. Yeah, I saw like, it, like the, the oh figure it out logo blue. was on his crotch. <laughs> hey, I brand everything in this house, Pete. Um, he does come with removable head, and this is what his original head, fresh out of the box, was. Ooh. Okay. Call with the beard. I like That's the beard. The the beard That's does look good. That way. Yeah. Uh, that, so that was the alternate head? Yeah. All right. That's more modern, I guess. And the last new thing that I got, this one is a close personal favorite of mine because I can't wait for her series. Oh, oh nice. Re -re. Yeah. And That's like the first armor. This is my favorite uh, uh, detail about the figure. 
the hearts on the on the on the fist. They light up or it, no 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 no. Is no. It well, just, it, uh... it, it's painted blue. It's painted. Okay. Blue. Yeah. Uh, and then of course. So like her second armor. That's really cool. No, no, I'm, I'm fine with it. If they came out with a figure for that, I'd I'd buy that in a heartbeat. And then of course. They don't have it. They don't have the the new armor for it. Mm -mm. Well, ain't that a bitch? You know what we're gonna have to wait for, Joel? And mm -hmm. I already see this coming. They're gonna make us wait until they make the Young Avengers, and then they give us a set that comes with either that movie or that uh that series, and then that's when they'll start giving us uh stuff for Riri and stuff. Because I'm I'm telling you, finding stuff for any of the Young Avengers is almost impossible for the Marvel Legends run with with Hasbro. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not. Yeah, but well, yeah, but she's not a young Avenger technically. She's a champion. No, no, not at all. But I'm saying the only chance of us probably getting another one of hers uh, is probably when they when they have something more recognizable to the viewer. A lot of action, yeah. right? For them to want to buy. So that's all I have so far. I have a She-Hulk coming. I have um, Miles Morales. I told Joel I have that coming. I have an Ultron coming. Nice. And that's it. That's all I have. It's not of Ultron. I, I love this design of the Ultron. I can't wait to show you uh, you guys when it comes in. Um, it was a really, really, really dope design. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, Still that's waiting it. to see a picture of your entire Marvel Legends collection, man. I'm waiting till I'm, 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 I feel as though I've gotten the ones that I really want and then assemble them all and, and showcase them. I'm waiting on this Hawkeye to drop. That's that's what I'm waiting. Hawkeye and um Kate Bishop. They're supposed to be dropping in January. Who's okay. part of that collection? Would you say, Joe? Who's part of that collection? All we know is that it's Hawkeye and, and uh, okay. yeah, that's it. But I find it hard to believe that Echo won't be part of it. Um, you know what I think they're waiting for? The reveal. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not even joking. I think the builder figure will either be Yelena or Kingpin. Watch. Can't be She's this big. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, figure you like. no. A Koye isn't that that big either, and she was a builder figure. Oh, um, so I could see the builder figure probably being King Pen, and they're just waiting on it. You know, you don't want to. That, that, that's cool though. That's really. Cool. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that would be sold out the second it's announced, not the minute. The second it's announced, and then poor Juwan and Pete are gonna have to look on either Hasbro Pulse or, or freaking eBay and see people selling it for five thousand dollars in a in a left kidney and it's like well all right I, I don't need it for that much like relax guys mm -hmm. um but yeah so that's all I got I love Note this to self take a look for the Hawkeye figures so we can mm -hmm. exactly you know what maybe I'm gonna edit this out so no one no one gets in <laughs> yeah no nobody we don't need anybody <laughs> knowing that one <laughs> I don't want to have to be fighting people over this, but uh, what you got, Pete? All right. So the only I got a lot of Transformers this oh, last yes. week. The only yep. one that is not a Transformer is I do not have many of these Storm Collectibles figures. I only have Akuma, and I just added Ooh. Evil Ryu to the mix. Oh. Mm -hmm. But I'll take it. I got to get on that, bro. I got to get on my Street Fighter. That's like, they're really, that's the problem. Is like there's so many of them, and they're, they're not cheap. They're like fucking $70, $80, give or take, on average. So I'm like, all right, let me just get the ones that I like, the ones that I really, you know, play as or whatever, and that's that's going to be it. Yeah, so I just really let me one of my stick main with too. Ryu and Akuma. And the only Ryu, Pete, that I've ever found that Ryu. 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 I got Ryu. Sorry. Not right. I pronounced it how you. it looks. Um, I used to say Ru Yu, so I'm on, I'm on a step up already. Um, you used to say Ru Yu, you said? Yeah. <laughs> it's the 3.75 uh, version, and it comes with, believe it or not, it comes with Black Widow. It's part of the uh, the Marvel Marvel vs. Capcom line. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know they made Mega a, Man. Uh, yeah, Mega Man comes with Iron Man. Uh, there's a weird Captain America that comes with somebody. I don't remember. But the dopest one is the Mega Man that comes with Iron Man. I'm like, yeah, that's fucking cool. I like that. It's a good team up. Not for nothing. Cool. Wouldn't Man. mind an animated movie of that. They're working so, on one. This one finally came in the mail. I actually opened this package. It's a really fantastic one. So this is, this is actually, I guess, kind of technically an official unboxing on Figure It Out right now. Ooh. Uh, 
It's called uh, Sphinx because, you know, these third-party developers can't call it Mirage or they're going to get sued. <laughs> but this is a fucking dope figure, man. Let me show you this fucking car right now. Well, it's really Mirage, but they can't call it Mirage. So. Yeah, exactly. Like, and... Yeah, this thing is just super oh detailed. God, so oh. damn cool. He's got the little driver in there. He, he rolls. Uh, oh, this rolls a little tight, but the rest of them, rest of them roll really damn well. I'm kind. I don't know if I want to like transform them or leave them as the car because I got some of my Autobots as the cars because I just like you know I dig you the know, cars. You know what the determining factor always is, Pete. How What's difficult that? it is to transform it. If that shit is difficult, once you transform it, these are a pain in the damn ass. I have to look at videos. Like the instructions are basura. I can't understand a <laughs> lick of a, what's going on, which way something's turning. So there, there's a lot of great, uh, like, transformer tutorial videos out there in YouTube land. Feel free, to everybody, go find your own. Um, but yeah, I, I use like two, two or so different guys. Uh, another one that was on pre-order. Now I showed you my MP52 Starscream. I also Thundercracker just dropped. So oh, I picked, got that one. Yeah. That was on pre-order for a while. This is actually Baby's first Thundercracker, so I'm very happy with this. Uh, I just love Skywarp. I just love the box. Is really cool. Yeah, the cover really does their boxes very, very well. Yes, they do. Flip it around for me. Is there anything? Sure. Else? Yeah, we've got uh, some product shots. Uh, pretty. Now, the issue with this, with these MP52 figures is they're pretty short. Like, if the, if the MP, MP, what is it, 36 Megatron is, uh, is a little under a foot. And these guys clock in, like, a full head underneath him. So it's really kind of tough to see how Starscream could want to take over the Decepticons being so damn short. But, you know, I guess I can't talk shit as a little guy because I'm a little guy. So, I don't know. I, I feel for him in this case. Same and there's, there's another one out there. Um, DS01, I think. Crimson Wing is the name of the toy. It's a third-party developer, and it's a really nice Starscream. It's a little bit taller, uh, but they don't have the other two Seekers right now, and I'm not seeing any plans for them to make them so that's why I'm sticking with the Takara at this point. I'll probably regret that when DS comes out with the other two. And then I'm like, all right, now I'm going to go get those and sell these. But that's, that's sometime in the future. But the biggest thing that I got this, this week, and big is an understatement. I treated myself. I decided that there is... If I'm going to go into this Transformers collecting thing, I'm going to go balls to the wall. Oh, and boy. there's only really one way to do combiners at this point, and that's Zeta Toys. And this is just one of them. This is Blitzkrieg. Uh, Blitzkrieg. With, I forget the actual names of these guys. These are the Combaticons that form Bruticus. This thing oh, oh my is five full-sized masterpiece scale figures that go together to form one big two-foot uh, robot called, in this case, again, with that whole third party not trying to get sued shit, right. Armageddon. But it is, in fact, Bruticus. And I can yeah. give you kind of an idea so of the scale of this guy. By right over here, I have. Come on, come along. This alone is the chest plate. <laughs> I, I could practically yeah. wear this damn thing. And right fun. here is the head that actually comes in like a little spongy box, so nothing gets damaged or anything. And you can wow. see the head in there. Yeah. This thing clocks in at just under two feet. It's like 21 or 22 inches tall. You plan Damn, on I, wish I, knew, I wish I knew where it was. I would bring on my Surter and see if that's if that's comparable. Remember the Surter that I showed you? Yeah. I will send you pictures of what this thing is going to look like 
Because if it's bigger than that Surtur, that's crazy. Do you remember how big it was? Surtur had to have been probably a little, maybe around two feet. Maybe a little, maybe shorter. Maybe shorter. The motherfucker was tall. God damn, he was tall. I put in, I, I, I can't wait to get this thing out of the boxes and built. I don't care that I don't have room for it. I just want to see it like in action. <laughs> I put in a pre-order for Superatron, which is the Zeta Toy Superior, uh, Superion. They didn't really change the name too much on that one. Uh, yeah. It's the second reissue. who has got like a, so um, <laughs> like a shiny metal. So they can't use the names, but they can they can take the exact look. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what it sounds like is <laughs> whoever owns Transformers is not aware. That's what it sounds like. That that has to be what it is. No way to think, think they're like this, and they're just like, eh, it's okay. There's no Maybe people are getting paid under the table. Who the hell? Who knows that's how it's working possible. itself out? That's very possible because I can tell you what. That's some of the best looking fucking Transformers I've seen in a while. Yo, this the way they're making them now. It really looks like they just jumped right out of the TV. They're yeah. so cartoon actors. Someone's it's getting incredible. paid under the table. Yeah, someone's getting paid under the table somewhere. Somewhere, someone was just like, yo, this shit's fucking great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to come work for us? No, not really. All right, well, we got to do something. <laughs> these, are, these, are great. these are great. We got to have our name here somewhere. Um, no, that's, that's a, fucking awesome, bro. Oh, man, I can't wait to get these things built. And I don't know if I told you guys, um, back over the uh, Thanksgiving holiday, mm-hmm. I placed a seriously big order for these Maju cases. The, so I'm redoing, like, my whole living room set up and everything with the new module cases, putting the statues into something bigger, a better display, uh, something for that big ass Benger statue. That's always in the background of my li- my dining room here. Cause he has, I can't fit him in anything. You know, there's literally no case that I have looked for on Ikea or anything like that, that like he fits in without me having to do worlds of mo- modifications myself. And I'm like, I'm no handyman. I'm a freaking graphic artist. I'll draw you a picture of a nifty case, but I ain't making the son of a bitch myself. I, can't, <laughs> I ain't cutting no plexiglass or nothing like that. I ain't got the room for it. I ain't got the patience for it. And I'll come out with, <laughs> on the next figure it out. I'll be like, hey, I finished the case. <laughs> Just call me Stubby. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, if I'm, if I'm going to spend the money then on, on like a professional case, then I'm going to do this right. And I'm going to do it, you know, I'm going to make this fucking shit look good. So I'm basically kind of building an entertainment center around these new cases. And then I'll bring all of the Ikea stuff into the basement, whole new setup in the basement. And there's, uh, there's some modifications that you can do to those, which actually look a hell of a lot easier because it's all just, you buy new clips and hang the shelves somewhere else mm-hmm. that you can actually like put the combiners in and put the different transformers and stuff on there. So that's what I'm looking forward to in summer because the module cases take like six months to get here from Singapore. So. Yeah, see, I want to redo my downstate. I want to get those. Remember we were talking about it, Pete, and you were telling me that someone probably sells it. You know the clips that you put the figures in, the six-inch figures in? Yeah. You know, them in action poses. I want to do a whole setup down here where it's just like a huge shelf. And then maybe I could show you my Marvel Legends uh, array that way mm-hmm. where I put them all in action poses and then it's like a whole big setup of like Marvel Legends. What I would love to do is have one setup for Marvel Legends, one for DC, but they can't figure out how to make an action figure to save their fucking life. Yeah. No. Um, so they can make great statue figures. Right. The McFarlane shit. And everyone always says that when I say DC has horrible figures. They're like, what about the McFarlane figures? I'm like, bro, look at a Marvel Legend figure and then look at the McFarlane figures and tell me that you don't understand the difference of the two. Mm-hmm. There's a massive difference. When you look at Ironheart, you don't think I would like a Batgirl, a Batwoman, a Nightwing like this? Like this? Come on. Where it's a removable head with Nightwing with the uh, with the thing on and then him with it off, a head for Bruce, a head for Batman. Like, come on, man. It's simple. I, I don't understand. They make their ballpoint so thin that if you remove the head, it's a fear that you'll pull the pin out with the head. Mm-hmm. I've done it fucking disaster uh fucking disaster and then i i remember telling you and joel i got so excited i'm like all right they're making these multiverse figures for dc they look great mm-hmm. i buy the batman one and i'm like oh i can't wait to open it 
I opened it. I looked at the face sculpt. I'm like, this shit's not Bruce Wayne. I flipped the box and it's like, this is when uh, Dick Grayson was Batman. And I'm like, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. So you have a Batman line, but no fucking Bruce Wayne. And you think I want this? <laughs> but they did do one good thing about that, that multiverse figure. The cape was not plastic. Oh, that's cool. That's the one good thing that they did. Uh, but outside of that, get your shit together, DC. Um, it, it's always something. It's always something. I used to have a Buccaneer Batman, and he had a rubber cape. I actually really liked it like that. I don't know. It looked good. Buccaneer Batman. That was, yeah, I remember that. that was, he was, oh. uh, after he got hit with Darkseid's Omega Beams, and everybody thought he was dead, but freaking, I don't like Grant Morrison's writing. I especially don't like it when he does superheroes. Uh, I just, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but credit where credit is due, the guy he finds the the most obscure facts and plays on him and runs with it. How many of us knew that if you got hit with dark sides, Omega beams, you got sent back in time. That was the original concept. Who the fuck knew that? No, he knew that. And that Buccaneer Batman was from like, it was the Batman through time. Like it was his journey to get back to, you know, that that little tidbit is interesting because now that I'm thinking about it, I've only ever seen Darkseid use the Mega Beams Superman. I've never seen him use it on anyone else. He's used it against Batman. No, 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 no. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I've never seen it. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. You guys are telling me. I believe you. I've never seen any iteration of it. He like they don't actually utilize it. He in. used it on Superman again. Batman jumped in front of him. That yes. was at the end of Final Crisis. Yeah, Why so would was. you save him, Bruce? Fuck <laughs> him. Yeah. <laughs> the world needs Batman, not Superman. What, what you Just, in the Justice League animated series, he he, he, uh, he ran away from it and got away from it, remember? Yeah, no, yes. that, that's what I'm saying. I just don't remember him hitting anyone but Superman. He'd hit right, Superman yeah. that shit every day. Yeah, um, and in the video games, obviously, he's, he uses it. <laughs> oh, right, in the video games, yeah. Um, No, that's interesting. Sending people back, and that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. It was the 70s, man. I don't know. (laughs) I'm just picturing, like, Batman's like, oh, no, I'm going to die. And then he wakes up, and it's like, arr. That was a really cool-looking toy, though. It was was legit. It was one of my favorite Batman toys, and it was... uh, Because it was so modern compared to the rest of the old toys I had. And the the rubber cape worked for me. You know, I don't know. Let's see. You said it was called Buccaneer Batman? Yeah. It was cool. It was really, really cool looking. And again, you know, because I like because the because the cape I'm used to is the one I had from back in the day. I had like this gold Batman from like '89, uh, and he had a cloth cape where you just stick it with the ring on. The, mm-hmm. It was just so flabby, like didn't look like a cape. It wasn't presented. And the Buccaneer Batman one, it's just it's stiff as fuck. It doesn't like wave or anything, but it, it looks pretty. Mm. Yeah, Buccaneer. Oh, Batman. Wow. Of course, the only place you can get it is eBay. Yeah, of course. I don't even know if I have one anymore, but uh, that was really cool when I had it. <laughs> or Etsy, like like you said, uh, Pete. I'm looking at it right here. Oh no. Yeah, man. I, Etsy of I had like, like, on there, like it's sold. Their custom shit is really good. I was looking at um Ooh, there it is. a I hooded Cobra it. Commander head for my one of my classifieds, just because you will never see the hooded Cobra Commander figure anymore. Hasbro has outright said that because. They think it's racist. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, if it was white and pointy, yeah, okay, I get it. But it's just a blue fucking hood, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm looking at it right here, Joel. It's only eight bucks at a place called Action Figures and Comics. It's probably my version of it. Someone's bought it. <laughs> Someone stole it. <laughs> it. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. So that that's the end of our. Oh, Joel, did you want to show us your uh your TV? On my, my TV. Uh, sure. It's a big one. Look at that psalm bitch right there. That's the room. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's, That's a wall. That TV yeah. said, all right, I'm going to just go ahead and stretch out this motherfucker here. All right. <laughs> five inches. Um, it's ready for the new age of gaming, as I keep saying. So I'm ready. I'm ready. What's I love up, TV, Joel? Because the first thing I thought is, as you're bringing it in your room, the TV just goes, ah, "I want all this wall. <laughs> <laughs> Give me whole wall. 
Thank you. <laughs> what was the first game you played on it? Um, Guardians, actually. The Guardians of the Galaxy game. Oh, cool. I didn't uh, even know that was out yet. I'm yeah. glad you asked that, Pete, because if you had asked what's the first thing he saw on that TV, it would be porn. It would be porn, and then it was Guardians. You know, I'm in no place to judge. <laughs> <laughs> Guardians was the first game I played on my PS4. I don't have a PS5 yet, but uh, but yeah, the game looks better on this TV. I'll tell you that much, much better. Um, I'm glad so you that- mentioned that, Joel, because I wanted I wanted to say this. You know how people keep saying I can't find a PS5 anywhere. Like, where are they selling PS5s? I don't know how no one has yet figured out there are no more PS5s. And they're using the excuse of, oh, the, 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 the boats in the water, they can't get there. Bitch, they stopped making it after they, after they released 3,000 units of that shit. They just said, all right, COVID and everything, hold. Oh, everyone go home. <laughs> it's like, wait, but we can sell more. Trust me, everyone go home. It's like, well, what are you going to tell people? I don't know. We'll figure something out. It's sold out. That's it. There you go. It's like, well, just make more. No, no, that's okay. Meanwhile, Xbox is everywhere. <laughs> Xbox, at this point, Xbox comes with a Happy Meal. It's just like, wait, I get to make this? Yeah. Take it home with you. Take it home, please. We have too much. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fucking. Uh, I want one eventually, but I spent a good, a good chunk of change on this TV, so like, I'm not in a rush. Right. Yeah. No, not at all. And Joel, I, I, I'm. I, I always feel this. I always kind of feel as though there's always bugs, right? Always bugs, always yeah, yeah, yeah. issues. Whatever. I always get the one with the fucking bugs too. Always. So to me, it's kind of just like I'll, I'll wait. Because here's also the thing: this is why I'm never in a rush to get a brand new system. They don't make systems often enough to me to have the need to get it immediately. Mm-hmm. When essentially then, you're telling me it'll be another five to ten years before we get a new system. So yeah, and most of the point. time, the games I want to play, are, it's not right away. Like even right now, like I can play them on my PS4. So once it, it, it gets closer to them, like uh, obsoleting the PS4, then I have no choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what? If Sony and Microsoft were smart, this is what they would do to force people to get new systems. When brand new games come out after a new system drops, have you ever seen what your TV looks like in high definition and then out of uh, high definition? Of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. They should do that. So you get a brand new game, and that new game for the new system is in high definition. If you don't get the new system, you get that shit in low definition. <laughs> Guaranteed people will go, it is shit. give me new system! <laughs> like, <laughs> the world would burn immediately. Like, what is this? What is this pixel shit you got on my screen? And it's like, well, go buy the new PS5, or this is it. This is life for you. Yeah, this um, is yeah, I, I think I just made Sony and Microsoft like $8 billion just now. They're like, hmm, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. All right. You know what's pretty on. funny on that note, real quick? Yeah. Uh, Cyber Monday, I decided I don't play video games too often just because I don't, I, I've told you before, I suck at new games, but I'm, I'm pretty decent at the old stuff. So Sony had a, or whatever, the Sony store had a discount on the Castlevania Advance collection it was all like the game boy games and stuff oh, that i loved so much they were good they were fantastic mm-hmm. on a screen this big yes, now sir. i'm looking at it on a screen this fucking big <laughs> and i'm like am i having a stroke like what is oh my god it, it was it's so pixelated it's so weird to just look at like a block of like that's my character running across the screen <laughs> <laughs> like this makes a lot more like can i shrink the, what i'm looking at a little bit can i get half the size of this yeah, that's a scary thought that's a good point too <laughs> yeah, it was so it was weird to get used to looking at it to where i'm like okay i think i can actually see an the, who the guy is right now that's what i'm saying the best thing nintendo did was creating the switch because it's like if they remastered a lot of game boy or game boy Advance games it would fit because the screen's not all that much bigger than what a game boy Advance. Mm-hmm. so it's more manageable but when you tell somebody like hey I'm putting a Game Boy game on your PS5, and it's like, <laughs> no, thank you. I don't. Yeah, like not that. unless you're juicing it up a little bit. Right. Like original graphics, not happening. Right. Like I would <laughs> love to see what uh, what uh, GoldenEye would look like on the Switch. Just remastering, it. just remastering GoldenEye and putting it on the Switch. I know I would grow a beard. 
I, I would grow a beard. I, I would just, I'd hibernate <laughs> fucking playing GoldenEye, uh, especially online, just schooling each other. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't even used my Switch yet on, uh, on my TV. Oh, I was about to say, how are you just lying? Like, I thought you meant period. I'm like, how the hell are you just lying? We played no. your Switch together. <laughs> like, no, this season, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't touched it yet. I'm like, this lying motherfucker. No, wait till uh, a new game comes out that you like, and then you utilize it on that. I mean, I have, uh, what do I have? I have? I have a game I need to finish, but I have, I have PlayStation games I want to finish first. That's why I really haven't, well, I haven't really went to the Nintendo yet, but, um, but I'll get there. PlayStation is not making it easy on Joel. They keep coming out with new shit every two months. And Joel's like, all right, finally finished this. Nintendo, here I come. Uncharted, remastered, everything. Joel's like, oh, well, <laughs> sorry, Nintendo. Uncharted <laughs> is fantastic, but I'll I already see you again. It. Like, I'm telling you, when, when the new Spider-Man game and the Wolverine game come out, I'm going to have to check on Joel. I- I'm going to have to check on this guy. Like, Joel is someone that won't dedicate literally all day to anything. But I guarantee you when that shit comes out, I'm going to have to go, Joel, you okay? You breathing? Everything's okay? <laughs> you shower today? It's like, I didn't do anything. I like, I like to, I'll take it all at once for like an hour or so. And then I'll space it out just because, you know, I, I just can't sit there and play games all day. Uh, but I do love playing, you know, and I'll, I, I do want to finish shit. And some of these games take forever. Like right now I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, and that motherfucker takes forever. And I, I mean, it's beautiful, but it takes forever. <laughs> um I know that because I told you I, I love to watch cutscenes. When I clicked on the the video and that shit said twelve hours, I said no. They must be talking about gameplay. And I clicked on it. I was like, no, it's just cutscenes. I'm like, how long is this game? And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go back to Witcher because the I have the expen- the extend the what's it called the same expansion. here pack. Same here yes yeah yeah, pack. yeah the DLC stuff. Yep. Which I left. I left. I didn't touch it because I wanted to save it for when the season two came out. I can get rehyped again. <laughs> now it's fast approaching, Joel. You gotta, you gotta get on it, man. It'll be here before you know it. Yeah. So I'm excited to go get back into The Witcher. So that's gonna be fun. I will say, I I used to be how you were saying, Joel, not not dedicating all my time to to really any game. But what what really kind of changed me on that was the story is getting better. Yeah, it's not playing the physical game that keeps me there for hours. It's the story. Because I'm like, all right, cool. I finished it here, save point, let me stop. And then it's like, well, what if I told you Clint's still alive? And it's like, well, fuck, now I got to see if Clint's still alive. All right, let's 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 check back in, you know? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> so, what, that, that Guardians game was good because of that. It right. wasn't just a good game that you could play, but it was a really good story. Great really story. Good story. Great story. Uh, anybody out there that's maybe not a huge gamer that doesn't want to play it, do what I do. Go watch the cutscenes of it. That Guardians game has a beautiful fucking story. I'm telling you, it's really it's cool. Story, really, it's really fun game. game to play and and to watch. Even if you watch it, I guess it's great. Uh, but it's and like I got to like I beat the game with the the movie costumes on, so that was cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but the game was fantastic, so I do definitely. I highly recommend. It. I know I got a lot of shit, but doesn't deserve the shit. It's good. Yeah, I say I felt the same about the Marvel Avengers game. Didn't deserve all the shit it got. But all right. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Guys, let's talk about sex and how you can enhance yours. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the calls. You can take them anytime, day or night. So you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy because we know how embarrassing that is. Bluechew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package with blue chew men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived your package has arrived and we've got a special deal for our listeners try blue chew free when you use our promo code gvn at bluechew.com promo code gvn to receive your first month free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our podcast. Let's move on. All right. So our next topic is, I thought this would be fun. 
we'd come up with a list of like B list or or down. Just it can't be mm-hmm. A list. Just B list or down. Most obvious ones have been taken too, though. Right, right, right. Um, uh, and so what B level characters do we want shows or movies for from either Marvel or DC? A list of five. I'm gonna go first. I'm not putting anyone on the spot. <laughs> first up, me and Joel talked about this. I still believe Kevin Smith will make this happen uh before the world ends and that's a question the question i want a question series i don't want a movie i don't want you to jam pack shit all into one make it a series i want a series of it uh and i know kevin smith has wanted has been wanting to do two things in life what is it onomatopoeia joel he wanted to do (laughs) and the question he created created, okay right 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 so he wanted to bring, I know he wanted to bring it to life on Arrow, but everyone keeps saying it's it's so hard to bring it to life. Um, and they were saying that about Martian Manhunter for, for years. And then we see him and we're like, that didn't seem so hard. That seemed very doable. Like you could have done Fancy, that. Too. But not hard. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know what, Joel? I won't even give them that. Because you can do that in, um, not prosthetics. That's not what I'm trying to say. But just uh, just makeup. You don't have to go... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't have to go CG for that at all. I always wanted to go press the uh, one makeup right. uh, on CW, but you know, we're fucking stubborn over there. <laughs> yeah, they went money wise and then said it's too much money. So he just won't ever be Martian Manhunter. It's yeah. like, well, just paint his face green. I don't understand. Uh, Why are you making it so difficult? Yeah, um, so, so, yeah. So the first one up is the question for me. Second one is Hit Monkey. You have not seen the series of Hit Monkey on Hulu. Please check it out. It is fucking. So you're saying you want a live action series or movie. I want a live action of Hit Monkey? Yes, a hundred percent. And I wouldn't mind if they go the route of what they just did for the series, bring in someone like Jason Sudeikis uh, to be the the actual uh, mouthpiece. Mouth mm-hmm. um, but my true dream is to bring Hit Monkey to life solely to pair him with Deadpool. That's all I want. That is all I, I would, want. It would be a great pairing. I mean, we, they've done it in the comics for obvious reasons. So, so many times. I, I say to you all the time, Joel, the funniest of Hit Monkey and Deadpool has to be their, their interaction with Spider Man. That fucking shit was hilarious. Spider Man. Spider Man's, he's a great sounding boy. You know, like he's, he's 100%. your. percent Because when you. Spidey's the, usually the funny guy. But when you get a character who's insane, like Deadpool, Spidey is out of his element. He becomes the straight man. Now he's Abbott to their Costello. And it's like, when written well, it's such a great dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was most funny about it is the idea that uh, Spider-Man found out that there was this mercenary in New York City taking out all all uh, all these gangsters. So he immediately assumes it's Deadpool. Um, but Deadpool goes, no, 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 like, show me these murders. And he sees it, and he's like, oh, no, that's the dealings of Hitmonkey. <laughs> and Spider-Man just goes, who? <laughs> like, it, it's it's Hitmonkey. Like, I'm serious. Yeah. It's this monkey that kills people. And just them going back and forth of Spider-Man not believing that shit at all. Um, <laughs> and then when he sees it, he's just like, no way. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What is that? He's like, I, I tried to tell you. Um, they're freaking awesome. I I got it somewhere here. Uh, my figures of Deadpool and Hit Monkey together in suits with with shades on. I I, I love it, and I need Hit Monkey. I, I really do. Uh, it could be something that's just a series. I don't need a movie of it. Just a series, something to have fun. I even take them as um, a small little obstacle in a Deadpool movie, like not a because he's obviously not a bad guy, but like one mm-hmm. of those. They're fighting each other, and then it's a team up, you know, to take out who the real bad guy is. It would be fun if they, they got Hit Monkey to to try to kill Deadpool, and then of course they team up like that. That would be. I'd I'd be a hundred percent okay with that, um, because this whole thing is he only kills bad people, you know what right. I'm saying? He doesn't just kill anyone. He has a code. So the idea of someone going, man, this Deadpool guy has to be stopped, and Hit Monkey's like, I got it. <laughs> and then they they work they end up working together and Deadpool's the ultimate mouthpiece. Fucking love it. It has a billion dollars written all over it. Are you serious? Oh. Uh, I'm like, come on. I'm like, come on. People made Jungle Book. 
that uh, John Favreau directed, A Billion Dollar Project. Like two Jungle Books, actually. <laughs> yeah. They were like two different ones in maybe a year's no, time. No, it, it was Jungle Book by John Favreau and Mowgli by, uh, what's yes. his name that directed Venom 2? <clears throat> yeah. uh, I can't remember his name. Who's playing Alfred uh, in, in the Batman? Circus. Andy Andy Serkis, thank you. Yeah, Andy <clears throat> Serkis directed that for, for Netflix. I'll never forget when that came out, I was just like, oh shit, John Favreau was doing a darker sequel. And it was just like directed by Andy Serkis. I'm like, did Andy think we didn't just see Jungle Book? Like, I, w- what do you think my interest in, in Mowgli is? Did you see them? Because I didn't see either one. Were they good? Was, oh, no. I, I'm going to say this that kid who had never acted before. To, to get on a large stage like that. And remember, he was acting majority of that movie alone. Because mm-hmm. remember, they're all animals. So it's Scarlett Johansson in, in, a, you know, in a booth somewhere. Right, right, right. Elba in a booth mm-hmm. somewhere. So to draw up that, that emotion that he did in that movie, being by himself, kid was fucking phenomenal. Getting Bill Murray. Getting Idris. No, Idris Elba was for Mowgli. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. He wasn't in Jungle Book. He was, I think, Mowgli. He was in the Mowgli. As uh, well. I think he was Shere Khan, wasn't he? No, he was, but in, in was he in, in Jungle Book? Yeah. He was? Okay. Because I know yeah. Scarlett Johansson was the snake. I know the big name for, for Mowgli was Christian Bale, wasn't it? That's what it was. You're, you're absolutely right. That's what it was. Bizarre. Um. So, yeah, this kid was essentially uh, <clears throat> acting alone, and he put on a show. And that was his first, ever, his first ever movie. So, but Mowgli, I never saw. So I can't Mowgli, I, I did see. Mowgli was fine. It was just... Jungle Book was clearly made for children. Mm-hmm. Mowgli clearly was made for adults. And it was more so to the actual story of, of, that, of that telling. Um, mm-hmm. It was super fucking dark. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So Hit Monkey is number two for me. Number three is Mr. Miracle. I want a Mr. Miracle series. I want it. I told Joel, I want, I want the series to be about Mr. Miracle trying to free Big Barda. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that would just visually be great. You can even have it as like an in credit scene of the last episode of him finally getting her free and then Dark Side arrives. Um, and then it's just like shit, they're gonna do something with Dark Side. Like, I can't wait for season two. Um, I think there's some fun stuff you can do with it, even if you want to make it a limited series and then just add him into a bigger movie going forward. Um, I don't need multiple seasons if it's something you can nail in, in, in a series and then just use them again going down going down the line. Um, number four is Beta Ray Bill. Beta That's Ray Bill. Fucking call. As soon, as soon as he said the name Stormbreaker in Infinity War, I said, well, I don't think we'll ever see Beta Ray Bill. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe it's still a chance Thor could pass that on make himself another weapon. And then when they said we're getting female Thor and she's using Mjolnir, I'm like, all right, well, you're not going to have three Thunderers. <laughs> like, that's just, that's excessive. You know, it's just, it's unnecessary. Um, so I feel as though if Beta Ray Bill is not in Love and Thunder, we'll just never get Beta Ray Bill. So, fuck it. Um, and my last one, and I blame Joel for this because I, I knew nothing about this character until Joel was playing, because um, Joel played it before me. We was playing Ultimate Alliance, the, the last one that came out for the Switch. Elsa Bloodstone. Joel, oh, well, that's an interesting one. Okay. He, Joel really was like, Joan, like, you, you need a female on any team that, that you have, and she would be perfect for, like, the Midnight Suns or something like that. Um, and when he said cool. that, I was just like, yeah, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And the game makes her really, really, really cool. Um, and then, you know, you check out a few comics of her and you're like, yeah, she works. She 100% works. Um, being like the Black Widow of that team, perfect. Perfect character to utilize. I just mean, in, in essence of, she doesn't have powers. Everyone else around her has powers. She doesn't have powers. <laughs> so. She has something. I forget what it is. Because she is a, it's a, like a legacy. Her father was a monster on her. She's a monster on her. Right, but I don't think she has any, like, she doesn't utilize magic, or she's not a vampire, she's not a She does have, like, enhanced physical ability, I think. I'll look it up. That's, if she does, that's interesting, because I, I tell you this, uh, Ultimate Alliance doesn't utilize it, if that's the case. She's just using her guns and shit. Right, but if she's just strong, she's not better using her guns than punching people. 
Mm, I guess. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. So expert markswoman, superhuman strength, speed, durability, endurance, regeneration, immunity to vampire bites, and use of mystical items. It's like oh, about Bucky, like basically. Oh yeah, Blade's gonna love her. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, Elsa, I would love that, and I would love to get a series of her that leads into being initiated into the Midnight Sun. She was always, because like I said, you need a, a female character. So I felt like if they ever did what they did with the Defenders, but with like the supernatural characters, I thought she'd be a great female supernatural character. Mm-hmm. Are you not proud, Joel, that I remember that you said that? Because I always forget yeah. everything that you ever say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joel hates that. We have these, these conversations all the time where he's like, Juwan, Knuckles is in the new Sonic movie. I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that. Juwan, not only did I show you the photo, I showed you the announcement. We talked about it. <laughs> you were saying how excited you were. And I'm like, I don't remember any of that. Okay. All right. I, I guess it happened. Isn't Idris Elba being the voice of him? Yes. yes. Knuckles. And uh, we just got confirmation today that the original voice actor of Tails is returning to voice Tails. Yeah. The, the original voice actor from the first movie the or from the video game? No, the video game. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's wild. That's cool. Yeah. I really enjoy the idea of that too, because I'm like, that's pretty cool. That doesn't usually happen, you know. Yeah. God forbid that could have happened with you know another video game hero that we all love and enjoy hearing his original fucking voice. I can't quite think of his name right now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I started watching Parks and Rec, and I was just like, "Good show." I don't, I don't know how he's gonna do it. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I don't know how. But God bless him. God bless him. Um, all right, Joel, I'll go to you next. Uh, what are uh, what are your five characters you want to see utilized? Um, yeah, this was tough. I, I was telling you earlier, I was like, Marvel's done majority of them, <laughs> so it's like hard to pick uh, out, out of a uh, so like Marvel, the Marvel side will probably have less of. Um, but like, shit, I mean. Like solo, I would say I would like to see a solo of Hawkman. We're gonna see Hawkman soon, but I want I want a spinoff. So I really expect, hopefully, if this works out in Black Adam, I want to see more Hawkman because I always love the the design of Hawkman and the, like. So he doesn't get enough love, and I know because once they put Hawkgirl in the Justice cartoon, she was always gonna take center stage over him, and I'm like, oh well, <laughs> like fuck. But yeah, he's getting he's gonna be in the movie, so hopefully we do get to see some good. Hawkman action in uh, Black Adam. So yeah, Hawkman would be one of mine. What's funny uh, about what you just said is, Joel, is how that only worked for for Hawkgirl. Because think about it. For a lot of us, our first, uh, our first Green Lantern, John Stewart, our first Flash was Wally, right? Only for now to not, that not to even remotely be the case. It's Hal Jordan and it's Barry. Yeah, you that's know? Jeff Johns, bro. Because that, like, like you said, I, I growing up reading comic books that during the '90s, it was Wally West, and Kyle Rayner. Mm-hmm. I was the next gen, um, especially Flash and Green Lantern. Um, so that, and that obviously, the cartoons took a lot from that too. But they went with John Stewart instead of going with Kyle, which I'm fine with. Uh, and then they went with Wally instead of Barry. Um, they, and then they used Hawk Girl instead of like Aquaman. <laughs> um, but whatever, you know, they did what they had to do. Um, but overall, that's all completely changed because of the fact that, that the new 52 happened and mm. they put a cyborg in the, in the seven and brought back Hal and Barry from the dead. I mean, they were already kind of back, but now they're you know, they rebooted everything, so it's kind of I mean? funny, you know. He, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to play the old guy card here, but I'm, I'm gonna for just a hot second, you know, for me. I didn't really know Barry Allen too much because by 1986 or I think it was give or take around there, Barry was dead. So yeah. when I picked up on the flesh, it was Wally West and I got used to him. Right. But Hal Jordan was my first Green Lantern because of the Super Friends cartoon. And even mm-hmm. though that was technically Barry Allen, As they well. never, to my recall, did an origin of the flesh episode. But there was an origin of Green Lantern. So that's how I knew it was it was Hal Jordan to me. And so like when I, and as it were, when they when they got to um not challenge of the super friends, the one after that, uh, cosmic defenders or some one of one of those wonky 
offshoots and when they introduced like dark side and everything else cyborg was actually in that as yes, part of the justice league so when he was added i was like oh hey cyborg's back and then everybody's like cyborg's not part of the justice league he's in the teen titans and i was like huh <laughs> like, that, I'm like what's happening here i don't understand <laughs> yeah. That, yeah you're right it did happen in the 80s <laughs> uh he did get added then um but speaking of that um before obviously Kyle and, and I mean well like Wally was Wally for the longest time but I, yeah, I remember yeah. Barry because of the old TV show I used to love that fucking flash TV. Oh, that was a great show that was Barry uh and I had the comic I had the, the comic when Barry comes back for like a an, an issue uh and I remember it was that Barry and Wally and I remember, Wally's costume was always so much cooler looking even though it was almost the same but Barry's they made it look plain and kind of just, to make him stand out from Wally's was actually all like his lightning bolt is like an edge and shit um but it was like so my barrier like my flash is also wally for the longest time it was wally until obviously recently and then my green lantern was even though i did read a lot of kyle comics i do I, i'll never forget green lantern with the fucking white sideburns and shit you know the <laughs> old, old green lantern and i have the comic book that has hal john and guy all on the cover so i'm like i've never had like a, an actual allegiance to any Green Lantern because I I knew four of them growing up, but like, which yeah, had a lot of problems. We needed a lot of lanterns. <laughs> I never liked that, but that is what it is. They still have a fuck. They have more. They have more lanterns now. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, um, that, yeah, they didn't. They didn't shrink the amount of lanterns. They only yeah. expanded it. Exactly. They're so, just like, um, oh, you can't handle four. No problem. Here's fifty six. It's like, whoa, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> pile it back. <laughs> I'm behind schedule on GL. I have no idea what's going on in that book. Uh, yeah, sure. me too. Um, I only I, I know little things, but I don't know. I don't know everything. And now he's not even in the just like a comic book right now. You know, it's funny with you saying that, Pete, about Cyborg. Let me say this, and let me give Joel all the credit in the world. Thank you. Okay. Even if that was the case, where Cyborg, you saw that first, right? Cyborg part of Justice League. And then he became part of the Titans. No problem. If it wasn't for Zack Snyder, Super I could maybe at some point accept that. But the way Zack Snyder utilized Cyborg, it made it so redundant to have Cyborg and Batman both in the same movie, part of the same team. Because then you go, well, if Batman's not the brains, what is he supposed to do against these aliens? Like, what, what do you want him to do? You want him to do karate like what do, you, what do you want him to do <laughs> so it's like if, if he's not using his brains to come up with contraptions and whatnot mm. what is that he was, here for that was my issue in the comics <laughs> too when they said cyborg was i'm like look i like cyborg and i thought cyborg should have been a member a long time ago but when it was evolving team right not when you were not the beginning team you know what i mean right. uh, as an addition later on like you know i think though actually honestly put all the fucking titans in there they're fucking old enough to be just league members put them on the team you know what i mean <laughs> Those right. old original Titans should be on yeah, the really. league. Honestly, yeah, they're, they're too old. They should be on the league. Uh, they should be in the league. Um, but when you're starting a new, I think it, it should have stayed, either stay with the Martian, or I, I always said they should have been Blue Beetle. Um, and Blue Beetle would have been on my list of the shit that we're talking about, but they're already doing a movie. So that's right. Cool. Thank goodness. Uh, so, Joel, yeah. let me ask you this before you finish your, your, your list. If they came out and said, Obviously, they're not going to change it. They're keeping Cyborg part of the, the Justice League or really anything except for Teen Titans. Um, but they're going to put Everything Jaime. Works. They're going to put Jaime as part of the Teen Titans. Would you accept that? I would have if they did that, but they, they only did that in the animated movies. And we No, I mean, if they do it now, like let's say the next season of Titans, they bring in Jaime and not Cyborg. Could you ever accept that? I could, but again, you know, and I would have accepted even more if they did the switch. Like, if they actually replace Cyborg, and they never really did, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, and it's really wild. hard to accept anything knowing that Doom Patrol is supposed to be in the same world as Titans, but Cyborg's part of Doom Patrol, and, and Beast Boy, who is actually part of Doom Patrol, is in the Titans, and Cyborg, who's a part of the Titans, is in Doom Patrol, and it's yeah. just like, I, I, I don't know, I don't understand. Um, yeah. so I, I was just curious, because it looks like they're doing some really different things with Titans. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if they went a, a different route. And obviously we know what they're doing with Jaime and um, Young Justice. Yeah, but Young Justice has fucking everybody. You know? No, no, right. But I'm saying him working with the quote-unquote OG Titans uh, kind of made me go, 
it's something that I don't think they will do because clearly we have the movie coming. But if yeah. not for that movie, I could have seen Titans being the first time we see High Man live action. Yeah, would have because it seems that. like they're trying to avoid Cyborg. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. You know, but I would have loved Blue Beetle as a, as opposed to Cyborg because like you could have got all the same shit but with Blue Beetle and not taken Cyborg away from the Titans, and you could have, you know what I mean. But yep. you know, I mean, that's beating a dead horse at this point. No, I, I'm with you. I just, I, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask because Titans is a place I could see them doing that. So I was just curious. But that's um, what I always wanted. But again, that only happened in the animated movies, and they never really. And the comic books kind of ignore it. So, <laughs> like, so much was offensive about the those animated movies. The fact that they, the fact that Bruce went, all right, Dick Grayson left a long time ago to become Nightwing. It took me having a bastard child for me to have another Robin. It's just like Bruce, how do we just skip over yeah, him no, and Jason? Like, yeah. <laughs> like what? No, him, no Jason. He was like, fuck it, man. Dick and the funnier old, thing is. He, we never saw him actually take in Batgirl. We just saw Batgirl stare at him in one movie and then defend him in the next movie. And it was just like, yeah. when did you join? Like, <laughs> we never saw you join. Yeah, it was a lot of that in those movies. Goodness um, gracious. <laughs> well, let me finish my list. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, I said Hawkman, right? Yep. Um, I would say you already used the question. Question was definitely up there. Um, so I don't have to use it. Uh, I mentioned the sh- down on it if you don't have if you don't have. A no, I, I can probably pull out some other ones. Um, even though the, the question's a good one, so I can't really argue with that. Um, because I have a whole bunch of weird characters that I like that I'm like, oh, will they ever? Well, Marvel did a lot of them already, so that's why I like for Marvel. I'm gonna go deep. So I want to see like the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. <laughs> I don't want to see those motherfuckers that fought the X Men. Like, that'd be cool. That's deep. And I, I don't know if, when we'll ever get there, but it seems like it's something that's possible. So, like, there you go. The Shi'ar Empire. You know who you could use, Joel? Because we don't have any definitive word that it's that is going to happen uh, even anytime soon. What's that? You could use your favorite Cajun guy. Gambit? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I kind of put him with the X-Men. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, fair. It could be separate. I mean, I think if you do the X Men right, they don't all have to be on the X Men. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I, I think if you're Feige, the best thing to do is what you were saying: start off with the traditional, original X Men team, right, and then have spin off series that then come together for one massive X Men X Men mm-hmm. movie. Right. You know I mean, I'm that'd, saying? Be, that'd be fine. I mean, at the time, I was like, you know, adding Storm to like. Uh, a black at the time black panther movie would have been cool or gambit to an ant-man movie because you know it's heist film like that would have been fun or you know stuff like that or like obviously um rogue to a captain marvel movie because there's so many mutants that connect to other marvel characters mm-hmm. they don't all have to be in the x-men movies and beast was an avenger <laughs> you know what I mean? now he's an original x-men as well but you can move beast around all over the place sword you can put him you know with a lot of different places you put beast. but that's why i think um, it's important that everyone not everyone, sorry, that most of some of the, the huge names that weren't part of that original X-Men team get their own series so that people don't expect to only see them as part of an ensemble. That right. people can get used to the fact that Gambit does a lot of shit that has nothing to do with the X-Men. Wolverine right. has a bunch of shit that he's doing that has nothing to do with the X-Men. Right. Well, uh, well, here, if you want me to, I'll give you a mutant, but I want mutants that are more... They don't, they're like nowhere, like almost like Thunderbird or Sunfire. Mm. Like, those are deep, and those guys don't get they got the lowest part of the branch. <laughs> the original <laughs> ones. So, it's like, I want to see more of them get because they're, plus they're, they're ethnic, you know, so there's diversity there in those characters. So, give them some burn because I really like the way they use Thunderbird and um, that show we like, uh, The Gifted. The Gifted, yes. yes, shout out to Emma. Emma Dumont, uh, who I, it was one of my first interviews. She was freaking amazing. She was great. Yes, yes. And that show was good. I mean, I, was I, a I, good think, show. I liked it. Uh, so, I mean, I wish they used more mutants that we knew because mm-hmm. they had some. They had some really good ones. And, like, you know, that is what it is. Though. I'm like, yeah. looking back, I'm like, man, they, so many missed opportunities. You could have this, you could have used this, you could have used them. We had two X Men shows that would not do the one thing we wanted to, which is branch okay. off and show more characters we know. Legion was doing it, and then the Gifted was doing it. It was just like, where are the people we know? I don't even know Legion. 
Like, yeah. I mean, they had some I didn't even watch Legion. Legion oh, I, I tell you what, that first season is some of the best television ever. Really? A hundred, especially superhero mm-hmm. television. Especially superhero television. The second one was more so kind of like that was the second one was put out maybe a year or two right before Fox was just like, take everything. So I don't know if maybe they knew that and they didn't try as hard in the second season, but that first season was just all time good. Like, oh my goodness, it was really. But it, it gets super. really fucking in your head, like. Yes, like, it does. It's too, it's too smart for me. I'll say that. Oh my, I can't. What Doctor Strange was like how trippy that was. It has yeah. nothing on Legion. No, the Legion will. Legion will have you thinking you smoked weed. And then and then you go, wait, I didn't. And then you look over. You probably and should if you're gonna watch life. Legion so you can keep up. <laughs> and I will say, Pete, the main reason you have to watch it is um what's her name? Uh Joel. You know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of women in that. He was in Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, I'll be Plaza. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we like that. She was basically the the what's his name? No. His conscience, essentially, but no, the, the, ultimately the, the villain. God damn it. What's his name? The king. Um, yeah, I'm going to Google it. Just keep talking. I'm gonna it's Google fucking it. me up now. It's bothering me. <laughs> I'm typing it as fast as I can. Uh, something king. Uh, Legion series. Nope. Yeah. Not the movie. Shadow king. Shadow king. Yes. God damn it. As oh, I get God. it. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't get. Couldn't. Couldn't grab it. Yeah, the shadow. She was basically the shadow king. And my apologies. They were. They had three seasons. So I. I Right. So then I must have completely forgotten the second. The young Xavier. Yeah, I saw that. That was again. It was just as trippy as the other two seasons. Uh, It's a weird, weird show. Um, Can't say I liked it because of the fact it was too weird. (laughs) <laughs> too weird it was hard to it was hard to watch sometimes i was like i don't know what i'm watching much. <laughs> um anyway uh my list uh what was i you were saying shadow bird is if you had to pick a mutant would be one of the the mutants you would like to see i said sunfire all right sunfire sunfire, sunfire where and did shadow bird come from <laughs> i don't know it was, it was oh, I gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy, man. Goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> Who else you got? You gave us three so far. Who are your last two? Um. Fuck, man. I had it. I had it in my head. <clears throat> so now it's gone. Um. Trying to, I'm trying to think. Uh, if you want to move on to Pete, I'll, 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 I'll remember them as we go along. <laughs> what do you got for me, Pete? All right. So I didn't actually have too many. Like I, I actually didn't really have any Marvel guys because, like Joel, like when it came to like Gambit or Juggernaut or somebody that I wanted to see get the MCU treatment, I'm like, they're gonna be there eventually. So it's like yeah. it's kind of hard to make that list for Marvel guys. So I, I kind of focused a little bit more on DC and they already had two of my guys. One, one's coming. They already had Martian Manhunter and I hope we do more with him. And I'm really anxious to see Dr. Fate uh, alongside Hawkman and everybody in the Black sure. Adam movie. Yes, Big sir. Dr. Fate fan. Just, I just dig the outfit. I like magic shit. You know, I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah. I will see your question because he was also one of mine. I would love like a, like a noir kind of detective series. Uh, also, the Phantom Stranger. I'm a big fan of his, yeah. and he he does not get enough play. He's like a really you watch Young Justice this week. I did not. I'm not up on that show, and I need oh, to rectify man. that problem. Yes, sir. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this yes, this you new do. arc that they're getting into is going to be good. It's going to be I, good. I want to see Matt Ryan come back as. Uh, as Constantine, that man was born to be Constantine, and I want to see him in a in like an R rated setting. Like, put him in a Hellblazer kind of story, and not stuck on fucking Legends because Legends has just gotten more and more. I used to like the show, and now it's just gotten more and more hokey as the the seasons have gone on. It's, like, it's, well, you're you're gonna get a Constantine. I just don't think it'll be him. Uh, yeah, it won't be him. Gonna, they're not, it's not going to be a white guy. Oh, that, that is right. We do know that. 
um, J.J. Abrams is producing a dark universe uh, with a, he's making Justice League dark. Sorry, uh-huh. I don't know why I was going so long winded on that. He's making Justice League dark. Um, so that'll be the next time we see Constantine. Um, and like Joel said, they probably will want to go drastically different. Is he also, isn't J.J. Abrams also doing the Black Superman movie? Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. That's not what he fucking means by dark universe, is it? That That's no. a fucked up thing to say. No, no, not at all. Okay. <laughs> you know what's funny though, Pete? I said, me and Joel said this. Uh, we were on the record saying this. When the, he first, when they first announced that he was doing uh, Justice League Dark, first thing we said was, He's clearly doing that as a favor. That's not something J.J. Abrams is, is passionate about. We knew he wanted to do something else. Mm-hmm. But that was more so like, all right, cool. I'll get this up and going for you, but I want this. And right. I think the payoff was for him to do whatever he wanted with Superman. You know, that was his. That was his passion project. Mm-hmm. And for Warner Brothers, for them, it was Justice League Dark. I got you. So I, I think that's what happened. That it was kind of just like one hand washes the other, and it was like I want it. I want Superman black, and they were just like, "But Henry, do you want Justice League dark? I want a black Superman." And they were just like, well, "Fuck it, we need this Justice League dark." Okay, all right, sure. Well, <laughs> I, I really now that, you, that now that you brought that up, now it reminds me of my other pick. Oh, okay. I do love the Justice League dark. Obviously, the Justice League dark is. One of my favorite things is like, and all those characters. So I want to see fucking characters like Etrigan and Swamp Thing and Dead Man, <laughs> the tough one. You know, and the Constantine's like one of my favorite characters ever. So like Constantine, obviously, I want to see more Constantine. But um, you mentioned the Black Superman, and I'm like, I- I'm reading a comic book now. I've been reading this these stories for like the last year or so. The Justice League Incarnate is really cool. If they ever get to it in live action, it would be really cool. And it's basically a multiverse Justice League where they use President Superman as their Superman and like um, uh, Flashpoint Batman as their Batman uh, and, and characters like that. So I'm like, if they ever get there like and, and engulfing the multiverse as the movies are doing anyway, just these characters are so random, but they work well as a team. And like so far I've been reading, it's been really cool. So if they ever get to that in live action, that would be really cool. Justin Incarnate is one of my choices um, to see a movie or a show, whatever the fuck, um, that'd be really cool. Especially if they're going to do a President Superman, it's right there. <laughs> and, it's one, and you can pluck him out of there, and that could stay his world, and it could, you could still use the whole multiverse idea, you know what I mean? Yep, mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. Uh, I, I know I already gave my five, but my my um my honorable mention, because now I'm thinking that I want to just put him on my list, Slade Wilson. Uh, apparently, Joe Manganiello came out and said, it, it's dead. It, 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 it's it, it's dead especially him being slade wilson it, it, it's it's dead i'm 100 percent fine with that 100 percent opportunity fine with that. Oh, uh, 100%. i i will never disagree with that but for Most me this is a missed opportunity uh, yeah. it's full of it but to me i would like slade as a series i would like them to explore that and then utilize him more in the movies a la teen titans when we get to that point a la maybe in batman or something but that is a character that should not be confined to only Justice League type movies. His character can flesh out so much story on his own. And then you branch him into, like you literally could have the end of his series be, he gets a contract to go kill the Teen Titans. And then it branches off into a Teen Titans movie. So I'm like, you can utilize him so many different ways. He should start off with his own series. I would like him relatively younger. Um, even though if Joe Manganiello was to come back, I would have absolutely no problem with that. I'll never forget the day I saw that in theaters and he took that helmet off and I was just like, that's Slade. That's, <laughs> that's, that's Slade Wilson. I, I don't think you could have done any better. Um, so yeah, so that, I, I want to add in Slade because I, I fucking love Slade Wilson. I got my last one now too. What did you say? I got my last pick too. Oh yeah, go ahead. Before we go back to uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm spin it off of your one of your picks, which was uh, uh, Mr. Miracle mm-hmm. Barda. Mm-hmm. I was always a big fan of Orion. I, I cool. think okay. he is okay. Dope. And I'm like, I would love to see the whole the story done right with whole, the whole dark side and and the, the high father and all that shit with Orion. I'm like, if they do it right, you have a really cool character in Orion that's like 
he's a he's the lead figure. He's fucking dark side son. He's there. It's all like it's basically Star Wars and DC comic books. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. You know, so yep. it's all there for you. But Orion would be really cool if they pulled that off. I'm and telling that's you, Genesis in general, but like the new gods, you know. When we drop this episode, I might use that as a clip and tag Ava Ava DuVernay, and she's gonna be like, "I fucking tried, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let me." I tried. You would have had it. I'd, I'd be filming it currently. I, it, uh, I I'm upset. I'm very upset that they that, that they put it on on ice for now. But I'm like, man, I really look, I really wanted to see that. I was right with you because I'm like, you're you're waiting for a ride. I'm like, they could put Mr. Miracle in there. I don't think they will, but they could. <laughs> like yeah. that could have been best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they would have been. They would have had because she loves Barda. Right. So it's hard to have Barda and not have Mr. Miracle for me. So that's 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 what <laughs> I was thinking. Peas in a pod, you know. Right. So, but look, you know, we've seen Stranger Things. I saw Birds of Prey with no mention of an Oliver Queen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I could see Warner Brothers saying, no, 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 just Big Barda. She's good on her own, and it's like she is good on her own. Yes. They she should is. be together. Like Robin is good on his own, but I do prefer to see a Robin with Batman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that was a great list, Joel, especially Orion, because you're right. That is that, that will give you a Star Wars feel. It, it really will. It really will. Especially if you get someone really passionate to yeah. write it. It right. could look how Dune looks, but so much more spacey. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? All Jack Kirby. You know, right? yes, yes, yes. And look, Eternals. Uh, Eternals did a good job of utilizing some of the elements of the, of of its comic counterparts. So if Eternals can work, right. New Gods, hundred. I would lo- I would love to see what like Ava's New Gods look like because we just got Eternals. I'm like, we see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Imagine what New Gods and like would have been like. Right. Yeah. And here's here's the advantage Ava would have had. You could have gotten as I don't want to say adult, but as dark as you as you needed to be. The Eternals could only like what how you saw that play out, and I don't want to say it because I, I think Pete still hasn't seen it. Um, but how that played out was as dark as you could get for Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Right. New gods, anytime Dark Side is involved, it should relatively be darker <laughs> than yeah. what Eternals was. Oh no, uh, I did see Eternals. I did. Finally. Oh, you did see it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank Very goodness. Good. Very good. See, Very good. I'm going to say this, Pete, and now I'm going to go on for you to finish your picks. I spoiled mm. something for Joel once. Okay. And it was probably the shittiest I've ever felt in life. And I've, <laughs> I, I destroyed a girl's lemonade stand. And I've never felt worse than when I spoiled something for Joel. So now I tiptoe into everything when I'm talking about that just to prevent it. So, um, but okay. Did you like it? Uh, it was okay. I didn't. I didn't dislike it. It was very slow. Like I, the, like the movie was like. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> like it was a lot of exposition, which was good because I don't fucking know shit about the Eternals. Right. But I, I didn't. I liked the movie. You know, it was cool. But I also understand what you had told me that Joe had said was this is not a movie I will watch again. I'm going to watch it once more because my mom loves the Marvel stuff. So I'm going to watch it with her when it drops on Disney plus, but it's like, it's not one that I can see myself like, Oh, I'm bored. I'll throw on Eternals that's as fair. opposed to like, I'm going to throw on infinity war, you know? Right. Well, no, that, that, that's fair. I just, I'm, I'm of the mindset that it's not a bad movie. If someone said it, it was a fine movie, I just have no interest in going back and rewatching it uh, mm-hmm. more times than I have to. Right, no problem. Right. I mean, there's a few Marvel movies I say that about. Captain Marvel is not a movie I, I look forward to going back to. But I don't think the movie was bad. It right. just wasn't, it just, to me, it, it, it failed on too many things. But it was right. not a bad movie. You know what it I'm saying? It just didn't do much for you. That's it. That's it. So I understood them. It was just hearing people say it was a bad movie that yeah. I... I I, no, I didn't. no, I I vehemently disagree with that. It was cool. It was visually cool. I mean, yeah, watching the celestial come out of the fucking planet and shit. Bro, oh. I'm telling I, like, you, it, this I'm bitch fucking you. cut the guy into pieces. I was like, well, that was lackluster. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. <laughs> the hell? It was. It was because at that point the stakes were higher than the bad guy, and that mm-hmm. never happened. The bad guy is your stakes. So if you have stakes that are higher than your bad guy. 
why would I care about your bad guy? Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I told you all that. I, that really bothered me because I'm like, that was supposed to be Thena's moment. And you robbed it by giving us something way bigger than that guy. Right. So it was just like, yeah. nah, nah, nah. But again, I thought for what it was, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, when I do my MCU marathons before like a big Avengers movie, I will rewatch it. Um, I but- never saw any anything. I try not to. I don't. I don't. I don't there's no trying. There's only doing, and I do it all. <laughs> First Avenger, I think, is the one I skip. I think that's the only one I skip. Never skip any, any. Yeah, I can't lie to you. That first Captain America movie, I fucking can't. I, I can't. I can't. In my soul, I can't. Um, but I, I, I just don't. The weird kid. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Pete, <laughs> what else do you got on your list? So, also, I speaking of travesties, I feel that we needed more Swamp Thing. That was a phenomenal series. Yeah. We got robbed of like what should have been like another three or four episodes, whatever it was. And I think if we bring back, because they they were slowly starting to touch on the concept of the green being, you know, yeah. more than just his power. Right. Bring let's get Animal Man in this and let's get a series with That's Animal Man. Bring Swamp Thing back and let's get Anton Arcane in this and shit. And let's do that that uh what you call uh what's his name? The crazy guy, Watchman. Can't think of his fucking name. Alan Moore. Let's get that Alan Moore series in there. And also the uh the new Swamp Thing that they did was like uh you know with, with Animal Man and that big crossover. Was that was that New 52? Or I don't remember when they did it. It was maybe like 10 years ago or so, maybe a little bit less. Might have been New 52. Oh, it was a phenomenal remember. series. I mean, it was actually my first venture into those characters because I had then went back and read the Alan Moore stuff, which was which was oh. like mind-blowing. But mm-hmm. like reading that crossover with Swamp Thing and Animal Man, where they were just kind of like going bang, 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 back and forth each month. And it was it wasn't like uh you had to read one to read the other, but it helped, you know. Like there was right, there was right. mad shit going on between them, and I was like, "This is really cool." Like I never knew about their connections and everything like that, and it was like the red, the yeah. green, the rock. Right. I was like, "This is dope." The rock, right? There's a yeah. whole bunch of that shit. Like I think that would make like a really sick like HBO Max series. Oh yeah, that's why I hope Justice League Dark gets into that. Hopefully they do not leave Hawk. I mean Hawk Wow, Swamp Thing out of <laughs> the team when yeah. they go forward, just because they had a show. It doesn't matter. You just he doesn't need his own show, obviously, because he already had one. So just use him like bring the whole. Yeah. You know, just bring him Throw in. Throw him in. We what? know we know about him now. We're good. Throw him in. Uh, I also I got a I got a big place in my heart, probably because of the old cartoon for Plastic Man. And I think it could be a really crazy, like, kind of, I'm almost picturing, like, a really weird R-rated dark Ace Ventura kind of thing, like, where it's wonky and wacky, but also really fucked up at the same time. I'll say this, Pete. It's been it's been my, my fan casting for forever. Me and Joel are actually talking about him because Ernie Allbacker, the guy who writes most of the DC animated movies, um, put him in, in uh, that Injustice movie. Because he just loves Plastic Man so much. And me and Joel were talking, and I'm like, bro, Plastic Man is only made for one man. If Plastic Man was utilized in the 90s, easily would have been Jim Carrey. But today, that's made for An- uh, Andy Samberg. That's Andy Samberg's role. That's Andy Samberg's role to lose. I can see that. You start with him, and then you work down if he doesn't want it. But Andy Samberg is the guy that you go to. Because he even just... He has a face that looks like it's elastic. You can pull <laughs> apart. True. You know what I'm saying? And he's the right kind of humor that could work for that character. Mm-hmm. Andy Samberg, and I'm with you. I'll take Plastic Man I'm, all day, every speaking day. Speaking of Plastic Man, um, now I would I would leave this as more of a series. And I always thought this would have been a good CW series because they really had a lot of similar characters. I'm like, just use it. They definitely ripped off the Fantastic Four, but I really enjoyed the Terrifics, which is basically a rip off of the Fantastic Four. Yep. Included Mr. Terrific, <laughs> Plastic Man, mm-hmm. uh, Metamorpho, and Phantom Girl. It's like a, a like a Phantom Girl, but like she's related to the Phantom Girl from the Legion, but I guess it's like some type of like some weird shit. Anyway, uh, those four characters are the Terrifics, and they're bonded together. They can't separate, so that's oh, why they're. 
they became a team because they had no choice because of some weird accident that happened that we were all there. They're stuck. They can't because they only go so far from each other without like breaking down, whatever the fuck. So I, I thought never that, do that. You know, that's that yeah, could, it's a that could really dark. That could yeah, be it really could have. I mean, it was I thought it was a great idea that for a show i'm like that would be a great show because it's basically fantastic four with different different types of characters uh because mr terrific is, is obviously the mr fantastic of the group uh plastic man is more or less like the human torch of the group and then you have metamorphos the thing and then, uh, but you know you get it mm-hmm. so i thought i'm like that would be a great speaking of it i thought terrific would have been a great tv series right well, yeah. i got one honorable mention on that too actually and He's not Marvel. He's not DC. It has been done, and it was a good movie for its time. I will say it's it was you know hokey, but it was cool. I would love to see a really dark redo of the Phantom. I'm a huge Phantom fan. Ever since the the Ghost Who Walks showed up in Defenders of the Earth, that like later '80s cartoon, I'm like, yeah. this guy's fucking cool. He's cool looking, and he has. You know what? And I read the Dynamite comics, and that's an awesome series. The whole shit is just great. I'm with you, Pete. And I'm going to say something that I know when we post this video, everyone's going to chew my head off. I don't care. It's It's been enough time. Mm-hmm. On another V for Vendetta. Interesting. I don't know if I need another V for Vendetta. Here's the I thing. Do I, if, if they came out tomorrow and said, I'll never get it, I'd be fine. I don't need it to be a sequel. I'm fine with you just rebooting it as either a series or another movie. I just can't let that be the only thing for V for Vendetta we, we ever get. It was too good. So like flesh it out a bit more with, with like a TV series? Right. Mod- yeah. Modern. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Especially with the times that we're in and, and people, you get marches for literally everything. Right. Anarchy right, right. can be spread so much easier today. Oh, so you want to modernize it too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that would be that would be good. And yeah, gonna do it like that, that's an then, interesting right? take. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just think enough time has passed that the newer generation uses it for memes more than they actually know what the actual movie is. Um, so I'm like, all right, bring it back, bring it back. Show these kids how awesome that was. How fucking awesome that was. Same for Road for Perdition. Like, a, a lot of these comic book movies that you utilize once, and then these are characters you just never really hear about again. Bring them back. Bring okay. them back. I think it would be cool. That's all As I'm a talking. side note, uh, since, you know, just figure it out, I've got an update. I'm looking at it right now, the, the kind of live update. I just every now and then I'm refreshing. Mm-hmm. The G.I. Joe Sky Striker has been funded as of about an hour or so ago, and it is – fucking crushing through the stretch goals right now there is an hour and 18 minutes left it is it passed the scarlet stretch goal so you're already getting a little mini scarlet you know in her like eight blue ace looking uh flight suit Mm -hmm. and now it is about 15 a little over 1500 backers away from getting the night force free fall figure it will not definitely not hit the 18,000 to get the two flight crew guys and i don't think anybody gives a fuck but if this thing hits nightfall, okay. freefall, if it if it goes to sixteen thousand in the next hour and twenty minutes, I'm jumping on it too. I'm telling you right now. On the other hand, the fucking rancor did not sell. It did not get funded, really and I'm really surprised because it was a cool looking figure. I thought when they added the the uh, trainer or whatever, you know, the, the big fat orc looking guy, uh, I thought that that would do it. And it only had, it was like missing maybe 500 backers. I really thought that they would extend it about a week. I'm surprised they didn't. I, I'm also I, really surprised this thing got funded. I'm a, honestly, I, I believe that because the Rancor was something that was utilized in the original movies, right? Yeah. Really never again, ever, ever again. You never saw like true. a, a that is smaller true. version of it in, in the animated series or anything. So I think it was just utilized that once. And for some people... It was just like, all right, that was cool, but enough for me to fund some shit? No, no, no. So I, I, I could see that honestly, but that thing was huge. That that thing was 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 uh was really big. Um, but I, I could totally see that. But all right, um, we just got two more topics before we get out of here. Uh, Pete, have you started the Flash crossover yet at all? I have. I didn't see today's episode, but no, I, I know I, they all didn't either. 
we're yeah. not going to talk about today. So we're just going to talk about uh, up until last week. That's it. Okay. Um, it's really good. Me and Joel were just talking about this yesterday. It hasn't missed at all. I, at I, all. I, I I've enjoyed all miss on this so far. What was the miss? Why is Despero a fucking half a good guy? Despero yeah. is one of the most mm-hmm. fucked up evil people, evil villains in the whole of DC. See, here's why I love you, Pete. Because that is one of the most rational questions to ask. Because I thought you were going to go where me and Joel have been since this crossover was announced. Mm-hmm. And it's why the fuck is Alex in this shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's where me and Joel went. We didn't even go there. That's a great point you brought up. But we went more so, why did you go as useless as you possibly could from the characters of that show? Right. Bring oh, in from Supergirl, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it would be the equivalent. Yeah. It would be the equivalent of bringing in Mary from Batwoman. Right? Yeah. Bringing in yeah. the nurse and saying, hey, well, she knows some stuff with science, so she's necessary. And it's like, all right, cool. Well, when I put a gun to her head, what's she going to do? Well, die, probably. Why is she here? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Why is she here? Why? You know? Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that question. Joel, do you, do you want to speak to that as to how they're, they're utilizing him so far? I know how they're utilizing him, but he's right. I don't, I don't know why he's being treated as kind of a, almost like a hero. Because he's like yeah. trying to save the, what, the Earth. And first of all, why Earth? If you're an alien, why do you give a fuck about it? And they mentioned it. <laughs> At least they mentioned, like, why do you care? You're not from <laughs> but then you never really gave us an answer. So maybe that'll be answered at the end of the series. I'm hoping, yeah, like, there's some sort of story turn. Like, he's really a scumbag. He looks good. You know, as far as, like, the CG goes, I was like, yo, he looks good. But you're doing this character an injustice. Right. <laughs> because That's my only complaint about the series. No, I, I like the rest of it. Yeah, it's a weird choice. Mm-hmm. Um I don't get it either, but hopefully they explain it better later. Yeah, and it's funny that you said the words injustice because off of last week's episode, I was telling Joel, I hope that's a future crossover, yeah. is that we actually get injustice. Like, what happens when some of these guys go rogue? Because uh, I just saw the trailer um, we just heard. for the all-new season of Superman and Lois that's coming back January 11th or 14th. And it looks like Clark is going they're going in a darker direction. I'm not saying Clark is out here killing people. That's not what I'm saying. But how interesting would it be if injustice starts from the top? You start it with Superman, right? And then instead of Superman losing Lois, Barry loses Iris. And that's how you get the heart of this justice society league, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, you lose the heart of this team, which is Barry. And then what happens when you have the fastest man alive and the strongest man alive turning to the dark side? Because there's no Batman figure in this. I don't know how they'd use Batwoman in this, um, but it'd be interesting to see how an Injustice storyline plays out. To me, that's really the only other place you can go with a crossover at this point. Um, Because I'm like, they did all the really huge shit early. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm like I think, I think I it was still sent out of their ass I think because uh, I don't need sure. to see alternate I don't need to see alternate universes again I kind of want to see the team that they assembled do something together um, not fight each other <laughs> like I want to see them work together so whatever they can come up with I'll be fine with because that's the whole point why put them together if we never see them fight together I just it made no sense to me well it also doesn't help when you keep canceling shows and having people die off that's, that does um, not help. That, but that's that, why that, you know these big now these big crossovers will make mean more because these characters are not around all the time. It's like true. rare. <laughs> How do you bring back Oliver? Does he come back? Is as... no, no, no. Oliver was never technically part of that. He was already a costume by the point they assembled. But he has a chair. He was there when he got the chair. No, he was dead. That's no, why he's no, a no, 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 no. Remember the first, the first, um. The first crossover, not the first crossover ever, that's not what I'm saying. But remember the first crossover, the crossover. Where Supergirl interact with Oliver. I'm talking about when they first founded that team in the round table. Yeah, remember right? they gave he him- He was already dead yeah. when they did that. You're right, yes. But he does have a chair, so bringing him back wouldn't be a stretch. No, it is a stretch because he's dead. 
I thought he was a Spectre. That's what I got. Spectre's already an overpowered character. You don't need to include the Spectre. Please don't. No, but I'm saying you could do some kind of voodoo shit and bring no, him back. You don't Oliver. need to be there. The others are there. I want the team that you know they've what? assembled without you know what? You keeping that mindset, Joel, is why we keep fucking seeing Mia. You <laughs> have that mindset because in no. their mind, an, a green arrow has to be here. So they keep giving us Mia. So either take dead Oliver or we're going to keep him. having to see no, me. No, no arrow characters. That's it. You get, you get uh, whatever. Diggle. That's the closest they, you'll get. They do not feel the same. And it's why Mia is part of this crossover. If, if that was true, she'd have her own show. And it shows you that they, she's not. So period. Done. Mm, fair. Fair, I guess. Fair. Fair. I don't know why we need an archer. Like, I... Like if, if if Hawkeye died halfway in, into the Avengers series, I wouldn't go. Oh well, you have to replace an Archer now. Like no, he's just gone. Put in a whole new character, like a, an all new character to add to the team. Well, that's what you don't did. need to keep the bow and arrow alive. Well, are they, and that and, and technically they didn't because there is no Green Arrow in that timeline. <laughs> I mean, the Green Arrow is dead. When Mia is the Green Arrow, it's in much further in the future. Right now, in their timeline, she's a baby. <laughs> that's fair that's fair all right um oh no sorry joe but you you've been enjoying the uh the crossovers so far right yeah i can yeah like i have little things but yeah for the most part i thought they've been fairly entertaining especially when you compare it to last season where it was like sleeping time like most of that season was just like <laughs> it was like a drag well, it was funny because um the first episode of the of the crossover of the Armageddon crossover, I told you I wa- I I turned it on, uh, and I'm watching it and I'm like bored to death and I'm trying to figure out <laughs> what is go- why is it so first of all what where are the characters that they said they were going to be in this show right and like why is it so boring and why do I, why does it look so familiar well like I told you they um. They didn't upload the episode that day, so I was watching an episode from last season, and I had no idea. <laughs> halfway, halfway through the episode, I'm like, "Oh my god, I've been watching an old episode," <laughs> and I had to wait till the afternoon, like, to watch the actual new episode. And I'm like, I'm "Like, there's no way Girl, it's boring." Do Same. you know how bad the CW has to be for you to not even recognize that you're watching a past episode? <laughs> the no fact idea. that you were so bored, and you're like, "Yeah." I'm so bored. It is possible it could be it could be a recent episode that's boring me. The fact that well, you was, couldn't even correlate that it was old lets you yeah. know what CW's at. I was I recognized a lot of what was going on, but I was so upset that it was so boring. And I was like, <laughs> wow, what the fuck am I watching? This can't be this. This can't be the crossover. I haven't seen anything that, that correlates to what they said we were gonna watch. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna put you guys on the spot real quick. I, I I'll start off. I want to know what crossover of the CW has been your favorite so far. Um, I'm going to go the X one. Remember when it was, um, that, yeah, that was my favorite one. Yeah, I still think there hasn't been one better. That was my favorite one uh, to date. I truly enjoyed that, especially seeing the reverse of Kara. Uh, obviously, Eop- can I just say this? Sure. I love how every time in these crossovers, they're like, all right, Here's good Oliver. Here's bad Oliver. Here's good Kara. Here's bad Kara. Here's good Flash. Here's reverse Flash. <laughs> They're essentially just saying, well, the reverse of a good Barry is reverse Flash. And it's like, well, uh-huh. no, because you could say the reverse uh-huh. of Oliver is Merlin. So I'm like, that that defeats it. It should be Barry versus Barry. But to them, it's like, no, we need a name. Reverse yeah. flash. There you go. No, we <laughs> We're bringing them back in. We're bringing Tom Cavanaugh back in. Whenever um, they, they, they put him in there. <laughs> every time, Joel. All uh, right, Joel. So, uh, what, what's your favorite? What, what's been your favorite crossover so far? I'm gonna say just based on the amount of people and and, and cameos, it was definitely Crisis. Um, but not because of the action, because that shit was terrible, most of it. But but the cameos are good. <laughs> there were a lot of good cameos. Once they were not fighting ghosts, it was fine. Um, but honestly, one of my favorite of all time, it was very simple. The first time I saw Hawkman, Flash, and Green Arrow fighting all at the same time, I geeked out like a little baby. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, oh my God, this is on screen right now. The Green Arrow, Flash, and Hawkman are fighting on TV right now. 
I, I was like, holy shit, that's cool. And they even did Vandal Savage very well. Vandal yeah, Savage yeah. was utilized amazing. Uh, shout out to that actor, because, you know, it's a character you'd expect to be maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more imposing, but yeah, his like, presence was enough. I, I love um, it. And I don't yeah. recall Vandal Savage being a big knife guy. So I thought that was interesting that they went that route. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they were they were making up for the fact that he's not going to be humongous. Yeah, so it's like he'll be more agile. agile, right? Yeah, he'll be more agile. It's like okay, no problem. I do, I do love the way that he looks in Young Justice. It's very imposing. That's what I'm saying. So when you see this actor, you're kind of just like they not they made imposing. up for it. They made up. For it. So I'm I'm fine. But when he started pulling out knives and throwing them, I'm like, I don't I don't remember sure. this. But okay, sure. all right. All right. Pete, what's been your favorite? Okay, I had to just look them all up because I don't remember them all. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm with Joel when it comes to like the cameos and stuff, like seeing uh, Kevin Conroy as Batman and seeing uh, Alexander Knox again, like all of those guys running around in crisis. That was really, really cool. Um, I don't remember Elseworlds almost at all. I, I, I'm trying, I'm looking at this thing and it was like the, this was also the beginning cool. to set up the plot for Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it introduced Batwoman, and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, no one had a Mazo in the first episode. I'm like, oh, holy shit. Yes, I do remember that. Oh, they, they also went to Arkham, right? Yeah, yeah, they went to Arkham. Yes, that one. Shit, is that my favorite? No, is that the one where, that's this. when Barry, and that's also the one where Barry and, and um, and Ollie Barry and Barry? Cliff, right? Oh, yes, that's exactly when they they swapped spots. Because, um, yeah, that was when they brought Merlin in. Because yeah. uh, Dr. They Destiny was the villain. They got exposed to the uh, Scarecrow Toxin. And they yes. were uh, spears. Yes. Yeah. That was the Dr. Destiny yeah, villain. Putting pieces of this puzzle together. I love yeah. it. Elsewhere okay, yeah, so that was Elseworlds. Pretty, yeah. pretty decent. I just, I don't remember enough of these, but I might have to go with Crisis on Earth X just because, like, I like seeing, I, I have this thing for, uh, you know, evil doubles. Not clones. I hate clones because there's always that who's the real one. I hate that fucking cliche yeah. storyline. But when it comes to evil versions of the character, we'll I love that shit. I eat that up all the time. Reverse Flash, fucking anti eternia He-Man, Nemesis Prime. I love all of that stuff. See? And this is why I love Pete. Pete, that was a perfect segue. <laughs> one of our next, uh, our next topics. But don't let Tamara uh, Morrison hear what you just said because Boba Fett is indeed a clone. Um, yeah. so, he likes so, to think of him as the only son, you know, but whatever. he does. <laughs> but as as he was told in the, the last season of Mandalorian, you didn't come from the net sack. <laughs> so, just so you know, you came, you came from a different tube. Um, but um, Morrison was asked if we might see Pedro Pascal in the book of Boba Fett. Uh, and his exact quote was, I can't say anything, but we have some wonderful, colorful things to look forward to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say too much about it because we're all going on this journey together. So that is yes. Um, uh, Morrison is a- apparently the more tame version of Amy Pascal uh, <laughs> because he just told us everything we needed to know without really saying anything. Um because me and Joel have always said this, and we always laugh about this. Whenever you ask an actor about something in Disney or something in DC, whatever answer they give you, assume it's a lie. He could have just came out and said, no, he's not in it. And I would have thought he was lying. He could have been telling the truth. But it's like, well, what do you think he's going to say? Nobody's right. ever going to, like Tom Holland wasn't going to come out and go, bro, I just finished filming with Andrew and Toby yesterday. And mm-hmm. it was crazy. And then when Tom Hardy walked on set, I lost my mind. And then when Robert Downey Jr. Sh- like, no, they're never going to do that. So they or can only just, tell you the, the bare minimum of anything. Or just recently with Charlie Cox. they like, fucking just sitting there like, I'm, I'm not in anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, <they're laughs> right, just, right. Just... But see, Charlie Cox doing that is why we were so mind-blowing when Kevin came out and was just like, yes, whenever you see Daredevil next week, it will be <laughs> Charlie Cox. Because <laughs> it's like, well, he never does this. This is unheard of. Is um, so Morrison's comments to me is kind of just like, okay, cool. Uh, I believe if Pedro is in it, it will be an end credit scene of the last episode uh, that will lead us into the Mandalorian, quite like how 
the end of the Mandalorian is what led us into the book of Boba Fett. Um, no, so that's how I saw that. Pete, how, how do you view these comments? Do you view it as like no or him just beating around the bush? I just imagine like, I, I know he's not really the guy in charge of the, the Star Wars arm of of all of this, but I just imagine like Kevin Feige just like looming over everything and would just like, if you say too much, he'll just strike you down. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> I, I wouldn't be so I don't think he'll have a major role. I don't even think he'll have like a full episode, but I bet you we see like a little cameo of him. I love you saying that because I'm just like Morris is like, Kevin, did you just stab me? He's like, no, <laughs> shut your mouth. And it's like, you're not even part of Star Wars. Like, what is, I don't even understand. That's not true. I'm working on a movie. Hey, wait, 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 hold on. Pete. Yeah. And then I'm just picturing Dave Filoni runs in out of breath. Kevin, you stabbed him already? Oh, thank God. I got here late, sorry. <laughs> it was traffic. And he's like, don't worry, I handle that stab. It's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Joel, how do you view these comments? I mean, you know, I, I take him for word, his word. And obviously, you don't, like you said, don't trust everything you hear. Uh, I, I've, we've probably been lied to a lot the last couple months. So I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really tend to listen. Well, I don't know what you expect these people to say. Uh, but I guess you keep asking because look what the, who expected Kevin Feige to come out and just say it, right? Yeah, I mean, hey, look, even if something as simple as Brandon asking um, Tom who bought the Avengers Tower, and mm -hmm. he whispers it to, to Zendaya, and her response made me go, whoever bought that, it's going to be huge. Like, it's not just like, oh, just whoever bought it. Like, it's like, going to be know. someone. He's like, I didn't know, and then he's like, oh, I do know. I didn't like, I do know. know, and then she's like, Oh yeah! Oh, and it's like ah, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> her response, I was like, it's fantastic. Uh, Even when you see the light bulb go off in his head, it's like, oh yeah, that's who bought it. Like, oh, you crafty motherfuckers. Or freedom. Um, I mean, even his excitement sounded like we'll find out in this next movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, all right, and look. I don't think it's a coincidence that the director of Spider-Man, same director of Fantastic Four, and we don't know who bought the Avengers Tower, and the Avengers Tower being sold was in a Spider-Man movie. Come right. on. Come on. Come on. Just saying. But there was also one, two, three, four, you know, in that same Spider-Man movie. Exactly. So. Exactly. So. Yeah. It's crazy um, that it happened in Homecoming of all places. Like, right. we're, we're literally this. That hey, long here's the funniest part. Here's the funniest part is because remember everyone kept saying, Joel, oh no, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the Baxter building. It could be Oscorp. Well, here's why I think it can't be Oscorp. You're bringing in Norman Osborne from a different world. Right. So I think that's your way of saying you're not going that route. So it can only be the Baxter. Uh, yeah. Right, you're right. Yeah. It doesn't make it wouldn't make sense. It um, wouldn't make sense at all. If Norman came there and he was just like, Yeah, while I'm here until you kill me. I bought up I bought up real estate. <laughs> like I bought a building. Now there's Oscorp building, but I'll be dead. So that's not as fun as <laughs> War Freedom Plaza. I mean it makes a where is that gonna be at? Think right. about that. That's a very imposing uh building yep. in the right. middle of Marvel Universe. It has to be somewhere. It makes too much sense. And you know, I'll say this: you have so many characters that live in New York City. What would be cooler? Seeing a daredevil. Uh, episode right where they're driving by and it's a wide shot and it shows Oscorp or it's a wide shot and it shows a, a, a levitating four in a circle hovering above a building and you go oh shit that's right that is Baxter building okay yeah <laughs> like that just it, it holds more weight than just right. seeing Oscorp 900 times in the course yeah. of different Marvel movies that happen mm -hmm. in New York so it's, it's so crazy it's been this long we still don't know <laughs> That's why I'm like, it has to be in this movie. You can't make us wait until Fantastic Four comes out for us to finally know who bought it. Because at the time, they didn't buy Fox yet, right? No, no, no. They had nothing to do with Fox yet. Nothing to do. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, it might have been, been, it might have been yeah. right around that time. It might have been it right around just, that time. And the, the deal had just come through, if I'm not mistaken. It might have just come through before that Spider-Man movie came out. Yeah. It might have, yeah. Because look, yeah. Spider-Man was the Civil War. And that, that deal wasn't done yet. And then right. They were like, throw it in anyway. Yeah, they were like, put them in there. Put them in there. Let people know it's coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Our last topic, and this one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, our last topic is talking about The Rock's comments about Black Adam. 
Uh, so I'm going to just go through what he said, and you guys just tell me your thoughts on what he said. Uh, so the rock on building the characters properly while respecting the tradition and mythology. Uh, his quote is, you get one shot out of the gate to build these characters properly. Let's make sure we respect tradition and mythology, but let's not be handcuffed creatively. That's interesting. Uh, the Rock also talked about uh, their approach on developing Black Adam. We paid attention to some of the pitfalls that other films had experienced in the past. In the world of DC and what rightfully got a lot of fans unhappy and pissed. And as a fan, I was one of them. So that's The Rock's way of saying I waited this long because I wanted to see how badly they could fuck up so I knew what not to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he was just sitting back like, oh man, did they like Man of Steel? They did? All right, let's wait a little bit longer. And then he saw what BVS got, and he said, "No, no, 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 put black, put black Adam all the way back, all the <laughs> way back. <laughs> I don't want to come out in any of this." And then Justice League is worse, and then he's like, "No, no, no, it won't happen anytime soon. <laughs> like, it, we need some time away from all that." Um, and last but not least, uh, the uh, Dwayne talks about the possibility of Black Adam versus Superman. His quote is, there's a battle that's going to go down one day between Black Adam and Superman. I don't know what that Superman is going to be, but that's okay. Uh, I don't need to know right now. Um, sure, mainly because you haven't even fought Shazam yet. So, yes, right. you're right. That is not a concern of mine at this moment. It is concerning. Um, it's more of a, a worry for them than, than him versus Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The fact that people want to hurry up and see Black Adam fight Superman, Superman is very frustrating. Yeah. It's very frustrating. It is frustrating. Um, but I, I will oh, Shazam, say... Shazam, I'm like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, <laughs> my movie was good. You guys liked it. Can I get Black, a Black Adam first? Um, no, look, I, I said this before. The Rock has been wanting to do this for a very long time. So to me, you've had more than enough time to come up with what you want your story to be, what you can make with your story, um, how creative you wanted to get, how different you wanted to get. And already it's a different story because I remember how excited you were, Joel, when you first heard what the story was going to or, or the premise yeah. was going to be. I thought all I needed. Characters and something. Well, that was, I mean, everyone's excited for The Rock to do anything at this point. So obviously I was excited for The Black Adam, but like, I'm not a Black Adam fan. I don't like villains in general, right? Like, I don't go to watch the villain. I go to watch the heroes most of the time. So, right. I wanted to be excited, but at the same time, like, what was it? I mean, I get the like, origin of it and all, but who, cool, whatever. When he said the Justice Society was going to be in it, I mean, Hawkman. When I heard Hawkman was in it, I was like, it's Hawkman. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, so, yeah, I, I like his comments. He obviously truly cares about this project. I think it's going to be great. Again, he is way bigger than I thought than his artwork was for Black Adam. <laughs> when I saw that clip at Fandom, I was just like, Monster. who drew you? Like, <laughs> why did they draw you so small? And they, apparently, there was paddings in the original costume that they, he's like, I can't, I don't like it. So they ripped all the paddings off, and that's now him without the padding in that shit. Bro, if I was a director, when he ripped the paddings out, I would have said, look, I know you're more comfortable now, but you look the same. <laughs> like, yeah, you took anything out um now that that's glaring because i'm like i would have hated it if they kept it in he looks huge just off of what the man looks like in real life yeah, imagine padding. what he looked like in padding yeah, like imagine. he's not the hulk i don't i don't know what they were trying to do with with black adam but he's not the hulk don't make him that big um because i'm like he's already physically imposing over zachary levi you don't need to make him any bigger I, I, thank God. I think he just wants to be bigger. He just likes being gigantic. Goodness gracious. Now, it'll be interesting when we see him, uh, and I'm putting this in, into the universe, when we see him and Henry Cavill go face to face, because Henry Cavill ain't a small guy. Right. Ain't well, a small guy at all. In terms of height, he is compared to. The, oh, the height wise. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in stature. Like when you yeah. see them uh, like face to face, it's going to be like. He's a big guy. Yeah. That's gonna be I mean, he's muscular. He's, he's bulky. That's for damn sure. Because I, I, like, when exactly. I look at his Witcher and then I play the game and I'm just like, that's a big motherfucker. <laughs> like, is it, he's big. Um, but Pete, what, what are your thoughts on some of the the Rock's comments about Black Adam? I actually, I had, must have read a misquote because uh, when I had first read it, I I saw that Superman thing like there's a battle coming, uh, something like that, and he said whoever I read it from, and I don't remember where I got it, 
it must have been on Instagram or something. Uh, they said it won't be Henry, but it it will happen. And I'm like, well, that's almost disappointing. And especially for, like for him to come out and say it. So I'm glad that that was not the actual quote. That makes me a lot happier. Yeah. Because yeah, I, thought no, I would like that's how some people interpreted it. <laughs> right. Well, and that's probably thing. what I read and, and misunderstood it. Well, here's the thing. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to say that because we're getting two Superman movies that aren't Henry Cavill. So it easily could have been one of those two. You're getting a show and a movie. Oh, shoot. You're right. A show and a movie. Sorry, that's what I was thinking. That's oh, you mean Tyler Hoechlin? No, 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 no. no. They're doing a, a whole nother one. Uh, uh, another another goddamn movie. Superman? What are they? Wait, Val, I don't even Val, know about what. Val Zod is right. going to have a series on HBO Max. Right. But we don't know what it connects to. So that's that's the point I was trying I to make. I don't even know that. I have no idea. Val Who the Zod fuck is Val Zod? Earth 2. Oh, that's the black guy, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I knew that. I thought that was a movie. No, that's no. Well, the- JJ Abrams is doing a movie, but there's also a show. Yeah. Uh, is the, it the same the, character? No. no. Valzad okay. is Earth 2 Super. Is the Earth 2 Superman, right? You know Valzad, right? From Earth 2. I know Valzad. New- yeah. Remember New 52 and there was an Earth, an alternate Earth? No. You don't remember the I, I, thought, I thought the Earth 2 Superman was the Golden Age Superman. That's in, 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 the, in the Golden Age, it was. <laughs> but I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about New 52. I'm, try- I'm really trying here, Joel. I really am. <laughs> Do you remember, <laughs> Do you remember uh, the JSA in the New 52? Hey, of, I, it, was hey, a, hey. it was like a young Jay Garrick and a young Alan Scott, and they made Alan gay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I remember that. Okay. When they made Superman it. in that, that's the, Clark, Kent, Clark Kent is dead in that in, in Earth 2, right? Oh. So Val Zod comes and it's like he's the superman of that world and like batman is dick grayson in that world some shit like that because bruce is dead you know what i mean the uh-huh. trinity is dead you know what i mean uh-huh. so so they're doing a, a a series based on valzad so it's basically they're doing so it will be another black superman series but it won't it'll be valzad and it looks like what jj abrams is doing is uh calvin ellis which is the president of superman as i was trying to explain oh uh, yeah confusing <laughs> i said the likelihood of Dwayne knowing right now what his what the Superman will be when he finally gets to face him is slim to none. He has no he he wouldn't know. I don't even think they know. I don't think DC knows. So that's why I said the likelihood of him saying it won't be Henry. He doesn't know that. He won't know that. Right. He won't. Know I, that. I, two things. I'm sorry if I confused you. I'm no, just... no. I'm you actually helped clear it up because see that's the that's the the fucked up shit is. I mean I I'm. I'm no professional or anything, especially nowadays, because I haven't, I haven't really, I got a stack of comics that I just have not gotten to in the last like year or whatever, mm-hmm. which is just constantly just, you know, growing and growing. But if that's confusing for a guy like me, who's been into comics for over 20 years, I can only imagine what the casual fan is going to be like. Uh, and like well, Pete, Pete, <laughs> here's the thing. They're not, it's not exclusive to Superman. We're getting two separate Batmans in one movie and in the same year, we're getting a Robert Pattinson <laughs> Batman. <movie>. Batman. <laughs> and you're expecting the audience Three to be Batman to next year alone. Who's That's my right. who's the Batman coming out of this? And DC is yeah. just like, don't worry about it. But and look, and I'm telling you about the Calvin Ellis Superman, which is the one JJ's doing. I don't know if that's what they're doing. I'm just assuming because they said black Superman. That that's what they're doing. And they right. said Kal-El. And he's Calvin Ellis is still Kal-El, is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? So if that's what they're doing, and it might be a timepiece. I don't, I don't know if that's the case, but I don't know. That that there's a lot of stuff we don't know about that yet. I'm just assuming that to be different from Valzad, which I think was what um, Michael B. Jordan is doing. Calvin Ellis makes the most sense, and President Superman is getting a lot of push in the comic books. So I'm like, it makes just too much sense to not be President Superman. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trust me, Pete. If if you're you being confused is exactly what all of us are. All of us are. Imagine trying to explain that shit to people. I'm like, I can't no. even bother. It's like, <laughs> I'm already dreading trying to explain that to people because I know I'm going to have to. I, I know all I can tell people is Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, Shazam. That's all I can tell you. That's yeah, it. We'll focus on what they give you. Don't think about the future as it comes and we'll, we'll fill in the dots. <laughs> Honestly, I just told my mom yesterday because she's, she's flying down here to see the Batman with me when it comes out in March. She's just like, all right, do I have to watch the other movies before this? And I said, do me a favor. When it comes to these DC movies going forward, don't think. Walk <laughs> down, watch. Yeah, they're the opposite. You don't have to watch anything. Unless it's a sequel, a direct sequel from another movie, 
Don't worry about it. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Joel, because we, we won't know what's connected till we sit down and watch it. That's why I'm like, don't even think. Sit down, watch it, and then let the movie tell you what it does. If, if you see not anything familiar or hear anything familiar, doesn't connect. Doesn't connect. Because I'm like, remember, remember, Matt Reeves said it doesn't connect. But Matt Reeves also is not in charge of what Warner Brothers will decide what they want to do the day right. after that movie comes out. Awesome. The day after that movie comes out, if it makes $300 billion, they could go, man, what if he were to team with Momoa and Godot <laughs> and Ezra? And then Matt Reeves is going to go, well, I ain't coming back for more. <laughs> and they're like, we don't give a shit. <laughs> so that's why I said, we don't know. Yes. Can we assume that it's not connected? For sure. Do we truly know? No, it's a multiverse. It's always connected. What are you talking mm-hmm. about? God, I can't wait for this to die. I can't wait for Marvel's <laughs> multiverse to die. I can't wait for DC's multiverse to die. I can't wait for Scrolls to die. I can't wait for all this confusing stuff I'm going to have to explain to shrivel up and die. And that's, that's going to happen, happen, man. Uh, Joel, to end this out, man, uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on the, Rock, uh, the Rock's comments about Black Adam? I'm I'm just happy that, that you know we're getting closer to it. And I want to see other pictures. Like I keep seeing him in the co- and I look, I'm happy. Um, he looks great in the in the costume. Uh, he looks fresh as shit, bro. And like I I really wish they gave him hair. Not a lot of hair, but just like it's some something. Hair. Yeah, because you know Black Adam with his hair. Um, but <laughs> <Full head affair. laughs> he has a mean widow's peak. Like, I'm missing, I miss the widow's. But he peak. has hair. But he has but, hair. Um, but um. Aside from that, he looks amazing. And look, the footage we saw at, at, at the DC fandom was great too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then his quotes sound encouraging. Uh, but I really want to see the other characters. <laughs> they gave us a very, very small glimpse, uh, like of the their Hulk suits and fate. And yeah. I want to yeah. see them in, in all their glory. It's fucking. I'm getting uh, anxiety. I just want the one. The one that's the biggest question mark for me, Joel, is actually Adam Smasher. Why? That's my biggest okay. question mark. Only like, visually? To see, yeah, visually, visually, how large they go. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a good question. I don't know. Because I'm like, if Adam Smasher is done well, there's no way I want Patty Jenkins to end a Wonder Woman trilogy without seeing Giganta. And that's why I'm like, if Adam Smasher is done well, then please do Giganta. Adam Smasher is mostly covered up, though, compared to Giganta. No, no, no. Like I said, I just mean how large they're going to go. Like, how big are you going to go? You know what I'm saying? That's just what I'm... I'm, Because, again, if we're going by some of the the art that they've released, he looks humongous. But, again, The Rock and his promo art looks really skinny. (laughs) And then you see him in the, in the, uh, the scene that they show, and he is just like, no neck, just all shoulders. So it's like <laughs> that promo art lies. He with him. A, well, and he has that open neck too, which I prefer. Yeah, well, like, yeah. like, yeah. like Superman, and like the, the Tyler Hoechlin costume is all tight and shit. I'm like, no, 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 open that shit up. No, open that. Joel's like, let him breathe a little bit. Open <laughs> it. Um, but no, like Joel said, it's very encouraging. And I just can't wait to see more. Uh, this yeah, is definitely a project I want to do well. Yeah, I know a lot of people were, you know, didn't believe it was gonna happen. I'm like, I'm just happy that it's happening, you know. And, yep. um, and now people can not say, like, are we sure it's gonna it's already filmed, it's done. Yep. Yeah, there is no more questions of will I want as soon as that movie's done, I want I want a green like all JSA spin-off movie. Come and give it to me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. This movie will either enhance it or kill it. <laughs> like they do one of the two. Because we got uh, one on TV and we got one in the in now in, in cinema because Stargirl has uh, the JSA. Yes, she does. Stargirl is a fantastic show. Yes, it is. it is. Yes, it is. That's the cream of the crop. That's how you do a show. That's how you do a show. Top to bottom. That's how you do a show. Yeah. No arguments to be had. That's Exciting right. stuff, bro. Yep. Um, but all right. That's all we got for you guys on this week of Figure It Out. I want to thank Pete. I want to thank Joel for joining me. Um, please make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern as we break down the new episode of Hawkeye. Go, go ahead, Pete. What are you going to say? As of right now, from oh. when I last said it, we are now 850 backers away from the next tier on the Sky Striker. That's oh. been, what, maybe a half hour, 40 minutes yep. tops? Yep. In 40 minutes, can we get the last remaining ones. I'm just I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing myself for the 3 a.m. text from Pete. Like, it's done. 
<laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's ending at midnight tonight, Eastern Standard. So it, that text probably going to come oh, at like twelve oh one. I'm either going to be real happy or really annoyed. Mm-hmm. And I misspoke before. It's not free fall. It's ripcord. It's night force ripcord. Ripcord. And that's what I'm really hoping for. Because fuck, I want. I really want that one. <laughs> I hope it. I hope it does it so I can chime in. I've got it all set. I. I. I the, all I got to do is hit back the project. But I'm waiting. I want to see what happens. I'm gonna go take out my garbage and then I'm gonna come back to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, next week we will either have good news or bad news in, in regards to this. So hopefully it's good. Um, but yes, please stay tuned. Tomorrow we will be breaking down the all new episode of Hawkeye. Hopefully, we get either a Yelena reveal or a Kingpin reveal. We're definitely getting Yelena, basically. But no, no, I just mean I don't know if she's coming out of the mask in this episode. That that's what mm-hmm. I meant. Uh, we okay. know that it's that it's Yelena, but I mean for just you know for everybody, they need to see the face for them to go. Oh yeah, Yelena. Right, right. Um. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait for us to talk about it tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Geek Vibes podcast YouTube page live. So make sure you guys tune in. We're going to have some fun with this this next episode. So uh, until then, guys, peace. Later, everybody.